we'll do that, right? Now, you have seven wheels of light, all right? From the root chakra to the crown. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to illustrate these seven wheels. You know, we'll put one, we'll put another one there, put another one there, we'll call this one the heart one, throat, one, two, three, four, five, all right, all right. Now these seven wheels of light is what enables you to go into the highest self of who you are. When I tell you that you are God and you possess the ability to be God, young hip hoppers, not you cats in here because I got some advanced teachers that will be showing up and advanced teachers in the room that can really go through this. But I'm keeping it for some regular hip hop nigga who's puffing a little herb right now and he want to understand what the fuck I mean my chakras. So you seven wheels of light and these seven wheels of light, when you tap into them, it, it, it enables you to go from your lower self to your higher self. Now, the root, the, the, the track is the spinal cord, you know what I'm saying? The 33 vertebrae up your spinal cord, which enables that energy to go from the base, you know what I'm saying? The root chakra, which, well, let, me, let me get this right, give you a little bit on each, they are all color coded at that. So the root chakra, which is here, is red, all right? And some of its qualities matter relating to the material world and success. So we're going to focus a lot on that during this lecture because a lot of hip hoppers never get past the material. All they rhymes is based on rims and shit. They're spinning, motherfucker, the rims are spinning. You know what I'm saying? On rims and shit like that. <laughs> All right? Next one is the navel chakra, and it is orange. All right, on the sacral plexus, and that one's here, you know what I'm saying? And giving and receiving emotions, desire, pleasure, sexual, passionate love. That's why a lot of cancers in their rhymes, they only talk about fucking, you know what I'm saying, mommy, I want to stick you and all of that. A lot of times they're not vibrating ha higher than that particular chakra. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show and prove this before this lecture is over, because it's all science, all right? So a lot of the sexual energy and material shit niggas is rhyme about is here. If your words and the meaning of your words don't vibrate higher than that, you, that, that that's all I can count on you for. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to show you how some rappers have actually moved up a little bit. So where's my paper? All right. All right, here is the solar plexus. All right, and some of the qualities as well, personal power, uh, authority, energy, mastery of desire. So when rappers start moving up, and this one is yellow, you know what I'm saying? They start realizing, you know what I'm saying? I, I need to rap about something else. You know what I'm saying? I got to stop just talking about rims and bitches all the time. They start understanding, you know what I'm saying? And the energy starts to rise, you know what I'm saying? Up to the third chakra. Now the fourth chakra is the heart chakra. This is the cross between the higher and lower. Before you can even access any of these higher chakras, you must open your heart. Now, when old school hats, heads did hip hop, this is, this is green, by the way. How they say you're green with envy or something, they're talking about the heart chakra, these spinning wheels of light. You know what I'm saying? Most of the old school cats, they operated from the heart chakra and above because they wasn't doing it for money, you know what I'm saying? They was doing it for the love of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So I attribute that chakra to a lot of old school cats who did hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Throat chakra is blue. Think Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Even though he rhymed about a lot of shit here, the power of his voice and the meaning of his words. Who the fuck is this paging me at 546 in the morning? Crack of dawning. Now I'm yawning. Wipe the cold out your eye. See who's this page of me and why. That energy, you know what I'm saying? And now granted, like I said, Biggie rhymed about a lot of lower chakra shit, but the potential is always there. That's why Biggie was dangerous. The potential to wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm tired of rhyming about this shit. I need to rhyme about something else to lift my people up. And then a nigga cross over, you know what I'm saying? And be on someone, fight the power, which was Chuck D. Also attribute Chuck D to the chak, you know, the throat chakra. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where you know that energy came from. His voice vibrated and he did his thing. All right, we'll move up here to the brow chakra, what we call the first eye. 
Some people call it the third eye, first eye, but what we're talking about, that inner eye, when you got to close these two and you can, you know what I'm saying, travel, dream, all the things you do about who you are, that's that third eye. The only rapper that I can say that really operated from that chakra, and this one is purple, was Rakim. All right, so this is Indigo. I say Rakim simply because Rakim was the first one to actually um, bring the knowledge of self. He told you he was God. And he told you that you was God, and he had the lyrical sword to prove it. You know what I'm saying? Think about Rakim, not just putting words together, but told you that you was God. That was the most significant thing that ever happened in hip hop to me beyond maybe the message by Melly Mel, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> no rappers have reached this point. But this is the crown chakra, in my opinion, because we're only dealing with my humble opinion right now. You know what I'm saying? Now, when Rakim reached here in maybe 80, let's say 88 when he was in his prime, you know what I'm saying? Something happened, which brought the energy back down and started bringing it down and keeping it down, and that was NWA. Okay? I want you to see how it's a science. As we began to raise ourselves up through the lyrics and the words we was putting out, they got to counter everything we do. So NWA showed up in 88. All right? In the 88, I remember, and it totally fucked the game up. Now this energy, these wheels, if you can master these wheels, you can do anything you want to do. Ask to project yourself, travel, higher realms of things, all of that. It's, if you can get the lowest, the, the highest chakras to spin twice as fast as the lowest chakra, shit, you out of here. It's just that simple. Now, a lot of us are not familiar with this, but they're trying to keep our energy down. That's why they keep a lot of sex, violence, and stuff, so you can't raise your energy up, the kundalini energy up, to be who we were supposed to be. And I'm strictly talking hip-hop. I'm going to show you through hip-hop how these chakras come into play. I'm not even dealing with anything else but hip-hop today. So everything I discuss will strictly be about hip-hop. So I wanted to show that so the young cats can understand the chakras. Vibrations. Everything moves. Everything in the universe is moving right now as we speak. This table is moving. If I can raise my vibration to an equal or higher than the table's vibration, shit, I can walk through it. And your ass would think you was high. You know what I'm saying? But whoa, whoa, this nigga just walked through the fucking table, God. The fuck out of here. But that's science. Okay? You need to raise your vibrations through the chakras so you can even grab some of the information. Like on the lower chakras, if you are, uh, you know, drugs, uh, sometimes alcohol, if it's an excessive sex. If this is all you're thinking about, then these are only vibrations you can pick up. The universe is trying to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? But if you raise your shit up, it's, it's, it's vibrations up here, son. You know what I'm saying? That you can pick up. That's why you can talk to certain people and they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. And you be talking basic shit, but son, you don't, you don't fucking get that? Their vibration is not there. No matter how much you talk to them, they'll never get it. Stop talking to people. You're wasting your energy. <laughs> Stop talking to people. I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? So everything you want to know, the universe is trying to convey it to you. But if I can't get up there to get, you know what I'm saying, to get that information, it's a waste. If all of these things is pulling me down, you know what I'm saying, during the program, it's all programmed too. You know what I'm saying? Everything you see on TV, this and that. They understand how the chakras work and how to raise yourself up. You know what I'm saying? So everything they're doing is geared toward low vibration shit. And they're trying to keep it there because they know who you are. If you don't know who you are, then that's something different. So you hip hoppers got that? All right. All right. Let's move on to frequencies. I might spell this motherfucker wrong, but I'm going to try. All right. Frequencies. You turn on the radio. Hot 97, they doing commercials at the time you turn this shit on. You don't want to hear no fucking commercials. You turn down the dial, the power, uh, what was that? 
105, power 105. All you did was switch the frequency. You switch the channel. Now, Hot 97 didn't go anywhere. It's still there, but you have tuned yourself up. Or should I say the radio has tuned itself into a different frequency. So now you're on some power 105 shit. You know what I'm saying? You can bounce back and forth. We too, as people, possess that power. We can switch the channel. Some frequencies are long, and some frequencies are short. Now, y'all could be talking about the same shit, but if I'm on a long frequency and you on a short frequency, we'll be arguing and shit. You be arguing with your girl and shit, and come to find out y'all talking about the same shit. Y'all in agreement, but y'all arguing. That's what frequencies is all about. You know what I'm saying? So think Hot 97 and think Power 105. Think positive, think negative. If you want a you negative frequency, you know what I'm saying, you want to switch over to some positive shit, when you change the channel, that means you have to change certain things about yourself. You know what I'm saying? You sitting around puffing weed all day, you want to get a job, you shit, you ain't got no money. Change the frequency. Put yourself, align yourself with motherfuckers who are working. Align yourself and put yourself in a position where you can get a fucking job. It's just that simple. You know what I'm saying? Alrighty, we'll speed through a couple of these and shit. Occult. Just me hidden. You know what I'm saying? As, as brother Cypher, hey, get well, brother. Yeah. I heard you a little under the weather right now, but get well. He's one of the eye openers 11, you know what I'm saying, that's be dropping this science. He breaks this down as being hidden culture. And I love that. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear the word occult, don't spook yourself out. You know what I'm saying? A lot of hip hoppers, I know you trained a certain way. That's that shit, that's that devil shit, son. Occult, son. It's not, it just means hidden. Everything is not out in the open. Certain things are hidden. And you have to search for them within yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's a program too, when you go to the library or you know what I'm saying, the bookstore, and you see that word occult, you keep walking. You be like, I ain't going in there, that's that scary shit. There used to be a saying that uh, if you wanted to hide something from a black man, you put it in the book. Well, niggas is reading now. So now if you want to hide something from a black man, you put it in an occult book. It's just that simple. So you reading, but now they putting the shit in the cult and so-called satanic books, and you scared to go in there. You know what I'm saying? Understand the science. It's your shit. They preserving it for themselves, because they the ones who tapping in, and I'm going to show and prove that before the day is over. So occult just means hidden. That's all. We all have an occult side about us. Metaphysics. I'm going to break that down as just high science. Not the normal shit you're working with. It's deep shit, son. It's high. It's above what's normal to you. And if you're going to understand this lecture that I'm going to put down today, you're going to have to have or be versed in a little bit of metaphysics. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear me mention the word metaphysical, I'm just talking about high science. No different than your lessons, God. You know what I'm saying? Which are metaphysical. Same shit. You know what I mean? Same shit. Sexual energy. You'll hear me mention this because it's extremely pertinent when, it, when we're talking about hip hop. And we're talking about your energy. Uh, the sexual energy is, we all have a sexual energy about us. Every time we get our fuck on, there's amazing things taking place between me and my queen. You know what I'm saying? Whether I choose to tap into that energy or not is on me. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm, psh, the solar fact energy from the sperm, I tell you, that I got shit from the sun inside my sperm, son. That's deep shit. Solar fatic energy from the sun is what sperm is made of. That's why at the rape scene, at the Kobe scene and shit, they got to come in with the, uh, what's that light that they use and shit so they can see ultraviolet and shit. I got ultraviolet shit up in me. That's serious shit. Now, if you tapping into the sexual energy, it can work for you. If you do not tap into it, it's working for somebody else. So a lot of times, all these sexual videos and, and we getting our fuck on, but if we're not tapping into the energy, somebody else is eating that shit just like a tuna fish sandwich because they know how to tap into it. You know what I'm saying? So the next time you bust that nut with your girl, if you take your focus off that ass, and focus on things that you want to bring down from the astral plane. I'm getting ahead of myself. Things start happening. This is ancient science, fellas. We've been doing this shit for years. 
years. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard shit to do, to focus, because you be on that ass, and you be ready to make that shit happen. But you gotta, if you, especially if you can get you and your queen and the shit together, oh my God. Shit, I might be driving around on new rims. They spinning, motherfucker. <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm saying? It's a sexual energy that we all possess. And it, it comes back to the chakras too, raising that kundalini energy up and making something happen. Even if you're a fucking chronic masturbator, understand that on the astral plane of things, you bust off, you giving birth to babies on a whole other fucking plane. Simple as that. I don't even want to go to Astral Plan. I know I got billions of babies up there. <laughs> fucking child support gonna be serious when I get up to the fucking Astral Plan and shit. But that's just the way it works. Just keep that real and shit. All right, so let's deal with esoteric, because I'm gonna talk about that. That's just the inner. We're talking about the inner things, sort of like a cult. It's just in, inner things. When you go to uh, church, this is probably what the reverend, if he's a mason, is, is, is studying for himself. But this is not what he gives to the people. You see what I'm saying? This is shit he keeps for himself. He gives the exoteric shit to you. And this is how he's able to keep you a slave. He ain't studying the same shit you study, and don't get it fucked up. He's dealing with the esoteric knowledge, the ancient knowledge, which all of that shit breaks down to you being God. This shit right here, you waiting for God. You waiting for God on the outside of you to come and save you, and you know ain't nobody coming to save you. If you still think somebody coming to save you, turn the tape off now. Bottom line, turn the tape off. And keep that real. Aura. We all have an aura about us. It's a, sort of like an invisible color or vibration that we have. That's why certain people you can walk up on, and if you can read their aura, you know that that's a warm brother. That's a warm sister. They don't even have to speak. It used to be a time when our chakras, when we was operating up here, that you can actually see the color of those people you was talking to. You knew who was sick and what they were sick from. Like, damn, son, your aura's a little fucked up, son. You know what I'm saying? Take care of yourself. We've lost that ability because we believe that this third dimensional paradigm that we live in is all that there is. So we've lost those powers over the time. When they talk about the fall of man, they talking about the fall of man. That's all that shit mean. When we used to operate up here, we knew all there was to fucking know. The fall of man, now we're dealing with the root chakra type shit, all right? And like I mentioned, astral plane, Astral plane, this means a dimension higher than this one that we currently operate in. It's a couple of levels, you know what I'm saying? That's how you tap in. You can do it through drugs. I wouldn't advise it unless it's some really good shit. <laughs> if you're fucking with the real good shit, then you can tap in. A lot of people, when they die, you know what I'm saying? They, they see themselves, or they're about to die near death experiences, they see themselves hovering above themselves, moving to a whole nother plane. Uh, you know, through meditation, of course, back to the chakras. Raising the chakras and energy up, astral projection, being two places at once. Get your mind out of the gutter, God, like you cannot do that. You did all of that, and then some, all right? And I'll talk about, damn, I'm all over the fucking place. This is, I'm dedicating this lecture to ODB. You know what I'm saying? Because he was straight chaos when it came to hip hop. So this is gonna be chaotic. It's look like it's not gonna make sense, but when you get the tape, it's all gonna make sense. So microcosm slash macro, which I just mentioned, macro, all right, you know what I mean, macrocosm, zoom, zoom. All right, here we go. Microcosm is the smaller portion of things, you know what I'm saying? Macrocosm is, you know, the outer things, so to speak, from a hip-hop point of view. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be talking a lot about that. They don't need to control the macrocosm of us. They need to just control the microcosm of us, which moves and dictates what's happening in the cosmos. As within, so without. As, as above, so below. So what's going on in the heavens out there? It's going on inside of you. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how that's going to work. So I'm going to get down and talk about all of this stuff 
to some regular hip hop cats who may not be familiar. Sorry for you cats who understand that why it took so long, but you gotta bear with me. I'm not doing a lecture for the masters because they know this shit. I'm doing a lecture for the public. You know what I'm saying? Regular hip hop cats who are gonna start coming into this knowledge. As you remember too, wisdom, power, and supreme mathematics is why. So they're gonna start asking the questions, why? In 2005, why is hip hop, why are we going through this in hip hop? As a matter of fact, Jada Kiss, his song did well, but he probably should have dropped his joint in 2005 because it would have been mathematically lined up. He can conjure a little bit more energy doing that. That's just basic mathematics. But they will be asking why. The children are going to be asking why. Parents are already asking why. Everybody want to fucking know why. You know what I'm saying? So let's try to explain why. Y'all like? All right, cool. There's going to be a test on all this shit later. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about me, my history as an artist, an MC, because I feel that that's extremely important. Um, if I did a book on football, and somebody in the audience raised their hand and said, you ever play? And I go, nah. But the shit, I got a big screen TV, and the game looks intense from the television. <laughs> I lose a little bit of credibility. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you ain't never played football. I don't fucking No, son, I got the HD shit, son. I, I, I'm, I'm at the game. That doesn't do well. So it's important to let cats know what I know about hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Also put a face to uh, the writings that a lot of cats been reading. You know what I'm saying? Or who I am. Black, what the fuck is this black dot cat? All right. So I felt that um, I started a little bit about the history. Too many times you read articles or books written by individuals who either know nothing about hip hop in terms of living or fabricate or exaggerate their knowledge of hip hop in order to add credibility to their story. Now, I was born and raised in the Bronx, the primary energy gridline of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I think it's undisputable. Don't get me, there was other people than other boroughs because that's just how fast knowledge travel. You know what I'm saying? My, my partner, Panic, first of all, my man Panic did an excellent tape on hip hop. He did a couple. The old school hip hop joint is eight hours long and he barely scratched the surface on how deep this hip hop shit is. And he didn't just give you the regular history shit, he gave you the science behind why they was doing what they was doing, which is critical. It's called Old School Hip Hop by Panic. He did another joint called In the Name, In the Words of Black Dot, Shit Hop. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind of cool, I appreciate that. Because I had mentioned Shit Hop to him, he said, yeah, I like that. And I forgot where the fuck I got it from and shit. But it, 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 it dealt with the times. And another joint called Street Disciples that has him and Brother Rich on it. And um, I thought that, that you, you got to have those tapes into your collection. But we mentioned the 100 monkey theory. You know what I'm saying? When, when we start doing something, we automatically mind, detect mind. You know what I'm saying? We just all start picking up on it. So I'm not saying hip hop didn't start in Queensbridge. I'm throwing up my ex's panic. <laughs> I'm saying, starting the BX, baby, you know what I'm saying, throw up the extras and shit. But it, it, it flourished kind of quick. I was fortunate enough to live on an energy grid line dealing with hip hop. I'm in walking distance from Cedar Park, Ecstasy Garage, Galaxy 2000, The Fever, Skate Fever, Echo Park, among other places, in walking distance. You know what I'm saying? So I was fortunate enough to see hip hop at a very, very early age. I'm talking seven and eight years old. You know what I'm saying? To the point where I didn't have a pops. You know what I'm saying? So I had a pops, but he wasn't around, and whatever the case may be. So obviously you, you levitate to the older guys on the block, even as a young, and my mom's was doing whatever she wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? So I had free reign to run the streets and witness hip hop when a lot of kids who was eight, nine years old didn't know what hip hop was. I participated in hip hop at eight, nine years old, 10 years old, 11, I wrote my first rhyme, which I'm gonna kick in a minute. Don't get it fucked up. I gotta put that in the, in the record books. So I'm from an age before turntables. 
Paul's tapes. When we couldn't even afford two turntables, you had to make Paul's tapes and you would come out and battle with your Paul's tapes. And that's what the older guys on the block did. You know what I'm saying? So I go to my mom, so I'm like, yo, mom, I need a box, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody doing the pause tape thing, and I want to get down with that. But it's got to have a pause button, because if it don't have a pause button, I'm screwed. We couldn't afford a pause button. She got me a box, and she had a stop button. Now, if you know anything about making pauses, you cannot make a pause tape with a stop button, because you'll hear all the clicks. My shit was dance to the drummer's beat, click the dance to the drummer's beat. My edits and shit wasn't sharp. So I come outside, and everybody laughed at me and shit. You know what I'm saying? Based on my little tape and shit. That fucked me up for a while. You know what I'm saying? It took me years to recover. I needed hip hop therapy behind that shit. But moms couldn't afford it. You know what I'm saying? So I did the best I could do until somebody on the block got equipment. And then I was able to sit there and, you know what I'm saying, interface with them and learn the basic elements of hip hop. And that was the, magnific uh, the Magnificent Seven. I'm going to call their names and put them in the hip hop Akashic Records. When I say Akashic Records, this is the records of all the things that's ever happened. We can tap into it when we want. When we tap into the melanin, go up the chakras. Everything that has ever happened. So I'm, I'm calling this one the Hip Hop Akashic Records because there are a lot of people who contributed to the hip hop over the years that went unknown. Nobody knows their names, you know what I'm saying? They made major contributions to hip hop. So I'm going to throw that out there. <clears throat> My man Mo, Ali, Derek. John, Spider, Kevin, KK, you know what I'm saying? John was called DJ Adamant, I'm gonna throw that out there, you know what I'm saying? And um, so, as I was growing up, they was doing jams on my block, Cedar Park, Herc, uh, Grandmaster Flash. I actually grew up with the Cold Crush Brothers, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm very, very proud of, you know what I'm saying? As a young kid, I got to see hip hop in its rawest essence. When the Cold Crush finished, a tape, we got the tape early on the block because we was family, you know what I'm saying? So when other kids was trying to do their little routine, we had already had all the routines there was to have from the Cold Crush. I grew up with Special K from the Treacherous Three, T. La Rock, uh, and his younger brother Tony Tone. I want to big them up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to big up, I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Chief Rocker Busy B, the greatest entertainer beyond Dougie Fresh, and Dougie Fresh is from a whole different paradigm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what was happening. As I um, began to do hip hop uh, more extensively, I became Chiba La Rock. I got to write that up there. I'm going to write it down here. Chiba La Rock. That was my first name. Then I became Cool D. Imperial, I, I bit that off of uh, the Imperial JC from the Herculoids after seeing him rock a show one time. Imperial, Cool D, Mr. Delirious, KD, who was it next, Chill? KD the captain. KD. The Captain, Dark Man, this is before DMX, I might add. And I toured the world, London, Holland, Paris, Germany, Canada, all throughout the States as Dark Man before DMX hit the map. I want to throw that out into the records. He may have been named Dark Man, but you know what I'm saying? Black Dot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep that lined up with the chakras for you. You know what I'm saying? So as we journey today, I'm going to show you from the earliest stages of me. You know what I'm saying? And when I say me, I don't mean me personally. You got to understand there was a hundreds and hundreds of MCs on the same journey, on the same trek. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to show you how, you know what I'm saying? Through a journey, you change your name, you abbreviate your name, and so forth and so on, and stuff like that. Um, I went to Gompers High School. Uh, big up to the original Gompers Stompers. Uh, who did we go to? We went there with Chris Lighty from the Violators. He went to Gompers with us. Tim Dog, of course. Fuck Compton. Tracy Morgan? Tracy, Tracy Morgan? Tracy. Tracy Morgan from uh, 
Saturday Night Live, Coco from SWV, amongst other people that went to school with us. You know what I'm saying? And um, when I was 14 years old, record labels wanted to sign me at 14. CBS, Tommy Boy, a whole bunch of them. I was only 14 years old. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to sign me as an artist. We were shopping our deals all through high school. Now, the reason I went to Gompers is because one time, Keith Keith, who I also know from the Funky 4 Plus 1, came to my school to recruit. And the way they recruited back then was he got up on stage and he started emceeing. I didn't give a fuck what they was teaching there. I wanted to go there. You know what I'm saying? Bottom line, he came in rhyming. Kid was doing electric boogie, and this was in 1981, because we didn't go to Gompers since 1982. I got my partner, this is my partner, Chill. This is my Tata. You know what I'm saying? He was with me the whole time, the whole journey, and he's here to make sure I don't lie about nothing. You know what I'm saying? He, he was flyer than I was. He was just as famous as I was as an MC because he stayed fly. They called him Chill. You know what I'm saying? So I went to Gompers, and ironically, me and him and my man, Mr. Zink, became the recruiters once we got there. And we started traveling to junior high schools doing the same thing. I would MC, he would do the electric boogie, my man Zink would do the beatbox. Mrs. Gore, big up Mrs. Gore. I'm, I'm just putting all this in the record so when cats want to trace back this history I'm about to drop down on them, they know I know hip hop to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? So I, I big up Keith Keith for that because I went to Gompers and that's when I met a lot of, you know, legends and stuff like that. Um, we were supposed to be the first group to sign to Zakia Records, 4th and Broadway, before Rakim and them signed to 4th and Broadway. And we missed the photo shoot, so they didn't sign us. Big up to Ramik 120 for that. I think Ramik missed the photo shoot, or Zinc, one of the fellas. So we didn't get signed, but I'm just trying to give you a history of how far back we're talking. Uh, you know, I was 15, 16 years old. Uh, when I finally did leave Gompers, I didn't graduate. I got the good enough diploma. You know what I'm saying? It was good enough for me to move on. <laughs> so you won't see me in the 86 yearbook. <sighs> but all of those people I mentioned, Chris Lighty, Violators and all that, they can all attest that I was there and my sole purpose was going there was to get high and hang out in the lunchroom. <laughs> That's why I went to school. You know what I'm saying? To get high and hang out in the lunchroom. And my man Chill here would roll blunts. He was the master. He could roll two of them shits at the same time and the shit be tight. He would just be like, nigga, stand there and hold the shit. And he would hold it and the shit would be so tight when you pulled it, it pulled all the way through. He was the blunt master. So we would spark up in the morning and we would go to school. Have my lunch ticket, because I was going to eat lunch. I had fucking munchies and shit and go to the lunchroom. In the lunchroom is where I began to build my real legend as an MC. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody would come to the lunchroom to hear me rock. Bottom line, am I lying, partner? Not at all. all right, so motherfuckers would skip class just to hear me rock in the lunchroom. And the, and the beautiful thing about it was, I never used the pen and pad since 1982. So guys would come to the lunchroom to battle me. Nobody ever really wanted to directly battle me. But they would come and they would have their papers and shit and they would be like, um, 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 not that one, um. And they would be sitting there and I would be picking them apart with no pen and pad. You know what I'm saying? Just bong, bong. It was just that easy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna reveal something I've never revealed before. I'm gonna show you how to rhyme with no pen and pad ever before the day's up. For those young heads out there who are interested and they tired of carrying around a, a rhyme book and stuff like that. So I graduate from, uh, well, I get the GED graduation. A few people showed up, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Get your little card and shit. And, but I was still in the hip hop heavy, you know what I'm saying? So Almighty KG from the Cold Crush Brothers, my man, you know what I'm saying? He had signed the B-Boy Records. And Ray, which I'm gonna show you now, this is the joint we put out in 1988. I finally signed to B-Boy Records in 1988 with my partner, Big Boo, that's me, and that's my man, Money Ray, from the Cold Crush Brothers. He recently passed away two years ago from cancer and so forth and so on, but that's the God, that's my man, I love him to death. 
He was the one who believed in me in the hood when nobody else believed in me. Now, he's an original member of the Cold Crush. A lot of people don't know that. He wasn't one of the original MCs because it was JDL, Kaz, Easy AD, and Almighty KG. He was one of the two dancers. Him and his boy Henry, and they was flying in the Cold Crush. My man Ray was getting more pussy than the Cold Crush brothers at one time. That's just how fly he was. So he believed in me, and you know we went up to B-Boy Records, and the way we signed this contract with B-Boy Records is crazy and shit because it was like we didn't really know nothing about contracts and we didn't care. I just wanted my music out. You know what I'm saying? I didn't care about contracts or what should I be getting. And Bill Kamara, for the old out there who know B-Boy Records, Bill Kamara and Jack, so you don't think I'm bullshitting, he on the phone and I'm sitting here with Ray and Boo and they're like, what you want to do, man? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is how I signed the contract. He on the phone, and he's pushing some shit toward me. Yeah, yeah. And we signed it. You know, we said, well, fuck it. Let's go for it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't give a fuck. We signed it. So we signed it, and this is the joint that came out. If you look on the back, we got on throwback shit. Oh, you can't really see it in here. We had on throwback shit back in 1988. If you look a little closer, you'll see Chief Rock a busy being. He got the, the 38 in his hand and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I want to big that up for all you hip-hop heads, heads from 88 and beyond. Now, this was kind of late in the game for me as an artist. I was still considered a new artist, but this was kind of late. To come out in 88 was kind of like late for me because I was, you know, doing hip-hop so, you know, so early on as a child. Um, so the record label flopped. The record wasn't that bad. We had nine songs on this joint. And back then, that's all you needed. We had a joint file DJ when money's on the mix, fake fly girls, a shit called Joyce, which was my classic. We don't need crack. The Bronx is back, tall, dark, and handsome. We had a love tune joint. So back then, that's all you really needed. You know, you didn't need 18, 20 songs with a whole bunch of people on your joints. You know what I'm saying? Nine joints. So what doomed this particular record was KRS One. Now, keep in mind, Karis One was the same reason I signed to B-Boy, because I said, damn, Karis One is repping the Bronx. Got, you know, the Bronx, you know, South Bronx. I said, yeah, we want to rep the Bronx, too. But in the midst of us signing to B-Boy Records, Karis One was getting off of B-Boy Records. And he made the famous quote, B-Boy Records, you just can't trust. Making funky music is a must. I'm number one. When he said that, Motherfuckers wouldn't even play our racket. We was going in, motherfuckers was breaking that shit. Get that shit out of here. Because they, they, they aligned up with KRS-One. Understandably so. You know what I'm saying? So when KRS-One, that shows the power of an MC as well. When KRS-One said, B-Boy records you just can't trust, they got a bad rap. So when our record came out, no DJs would play it except DJ Red Alert. Cool DJ Red Alert. And I want to big up Red, and I saw him recently at a party and you know, I thanked him, and he remembered who I was. I said, yo, back in 88, I put out a record called Tall, Dark, and Handsome, and you was the only DJ who you know, showed me love. You made me feel like a star for 15 minutes. He remembered the song, he remembered the crew and everything. A good DJ would, you know what I'm saying? So I want to big up Red Alert for banging that. But of course, the record didn't do what I felt that it should have done. You know what I'm saying? It was comparable to the times of what guys was putting out in 88, but it didn't do what it was supposed to have done. My first royalty check was 16 bucks. And I hung the shit up on my wall, and people didn't understand, why the fuck would you hang up a check for $16? Because I wanted it to remind me that hip hop was a business as well. And we knew nothing about the business. We didn't care about the business. We just wanted to put our music out. You know what I'm saying? So we disbanded, you know what I'm saying? The only way for us to continue making music was to disband. Ray went back to the Cold Crush because when JDL got locked down, they promoted Ray to MC to rock with the Cold Crush to keep the original flavor. Boo went off to do his thing, and I became KD the captain. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, still doing my thing, putting out demos. I went platinum in demo tapes. I want to throw that out there. I was fucking triple platinum in demo tapes. We kept a demo out every fucking week and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then one day, Tim Dog, you know what I'm saying, from Funk Compton, he gave me a call. Went to Gompers with me, big up to Tim Dog. He was the only cat in the hood who came to get me and showed me the world. So I don't have no beef with Tim Dog whatsoever. He said, suit up, nigga. He knew I was nice. He said, suit up. He had to fuck Compton now. Underground, number one single with no radio play. 
That song is going to be critical when we get into the analysis of the matrix. A lot of that shit kind of slipped under the radar with the East West Coast war, but Tim Dawn was the first one to throw a shot to say, fuck Compton. And it sort of broke the spell because we was into that shit. We started getting into that West Coast shit. And he, what happened with him was he said every record label he went into, they wanted NWA. Do you sound, can you do gangster rap? Can you do gangster rap? No, we from the East Coast. We didn't do gangster rap. Not like that. Cool G rap when that nigga was legit with his shit, you know what I'm saying? And he was just one aspect of hip hop. It wasn't a whole, you know, crew of gangster rappers. Him and my man from Philly, what's his name? Schooly D? He did some gangster rap. He in jail. He in jail, he on lockdown now. But Tim Dog called me and, you know, took me around the world and treated me equal. Money, stage time, women, he treated me equal, and I appreciated that. But as hip hop began to move more and more inside of the matrix, I knew that that element of hip hop wasn't for me. I was not a gangster rapper. I was a lyrical swordsman. You know what I'm saying? Big difference. You know what I'm saying? So that's the history, and I want to show. Then at that point, you know, Tim went his way, I went my way, and uh, we put out a joint on our own. My partner Chill helped finance the joint. It's called Leatherheads. A&R Killer, the hip hop play. We did an actual play on wax. You know what I'm saying? From beginning to end, breaking down our struggles in hip hop music. You know what I'm saying? We made a mistake with it, and I'll break that down in a minute. But this was our struggles, this was our money, this was our journey. You know what I'm saying? This is what we was taking, and this came out in 1993? 93 or 94? This was the last project I did, which was 94. And a and R mean artisan repertoire. If you go into a record company and you got a demo, that's who has to get it, the artisan repertoire person. They're the ones who sign a new talent, scouting new talent. Now, of course, you can go above the a and R person if you got some juice. You can bypass all that nonsense. We didn't have no juice, so we had to deal directly with the a and We got tired of them telling us we wasn't hip hop. You know what I'm saying? This ain't what we're looking for. We're looking for this, we're looking for that. We got tired of that. So we put our own money together, you know what I'm saying, put out our joint. Now I remember taking this joint up to uh, uh, Flex, a Hot 97 and shit. Man, there was an uncomfortable silence when I gave him the album and shit. I was like, yo, son, you know, it's the album, you know, Tall, Dark, and Hands, I mean, you know, Leatherhead's joint, put it out on our own and shit, you know, check it out and shit. And he stood there and we were standing there and shit. I was like, yeah, you know, a couple of songs on there, it's nice, shit, you know. We did about eight or nine cuts. You know, it's like a play, you know what I'm saying? And he was just standing there. And we were standing there not realizing that maybe there was something else that was supposed to take place. Some kind of monetary transaction. I don't know, but we were standing there. Never played it. That's all good, you know what I'm saying? But we didn't understand the business aspect or the underworld of what was going on with breaking new artists. We just wanted to put our music out. You know what I'm saying? So with that, I can cover that so that you understand where I'm coming from when we deal with hip hop. My first joint, Little Bo Peep started to weep cause the poor little thing didn't know how to freak. She put on the coat and looked at the clock and went to the disco and started to rock. Yes, yes y'all, and you don't stop. That was it. And back then that was considered long shit. You can get killed on the mic, hogging the mic like that. But just to go to show you the essence of where rhymes was. Nigga wasn't rhyming in 16 bars. Niggas had little rhymes like that in pockets. And I used to trade rhymes with the older dudes on the block. That's how nice I was as a shorty. But which really meant that I kept my rhyme and his rhyme too and shit. <laughs> but we made it seem like we would trade rhymes and shit like that. But that's how far back, and that was 1979. You know what I'm saying? I was 11 years old, but was at the mecca of hip hop right on my block. University Avenue, Cedric Avenue, right around that way, where hip hop, Herc lived down the block. Put it like that. If you wanna know, if you wanna pinpoint where I'm talking about in terms of this energy grid line of hip hop, Cool Herc lived down the block. You know what I'm saying? It was no big deal to see Cool Herc. I appreciate them now because they're the gods. I didn't know then, they was just doing what they was doing. Because I was a shorty, when they threw a jam, I can get right up on the ropes, you know what I mean? That shit, back up on the ropes, back up, you know what I'm saying? If you wasn't down, you had to stay behind the ropes. 
I could get right up on the rope because I was a little shorty. And I was being implanted with what the rest of my life was going to be about. Hip hop. Right there. Little shorty. When you see Nas on that album cover, what is it? Stillmatic? Or Illmatic? Illmatic? And you see him on that album cover, the reflection of his eyes through the projects. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't there when you know, the water broke from hip hop. You know what I'm saying? But I was there when that gizzard bag, what's that shit? The placenta. When that shit popped out of hip hop, I was right there as a shorty. You know what I'm saying? And was practicing a young practice practitioner of hip hop. Nothing major, just, you know what I'm saying? The older kids on the block would come out, they would puff their chiba, they would have their radios right there, and they would be listening to the gospel, the hip hop gospel, the new word that was coming to the hood. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm AJ's and overlaps player. I go back that far. I go back to British walkers, playboys and shit. I go back when mock necks had to pass the 10 second stretch test. Remember that shit nigga get mad at you? You got your mock nigga pull your shit and count to 10 to see if your shit is real. If your shit don't pop back. Oh, that shit is fake, son. That's how far back in hip hop I go. You know what I'm saying? Pause tapes, mock necks, British. All that kind of shit. My first tag, let me show you my tag. Because I told you you had to be kind of burst. I don't know what I did with the other shot. Oh, it might fell too. Yeah, give me a second. Give me a shot. Give me a second. What the fuck I do with that chunk? Uh, Let me show you my tag. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The white one I had and shit. Oh, shit, I'm fucking blind. All right, my first tag, which I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, into hip hop. I mean, I wasn't into tagging like that. Well, that was my little tag and shit. You know what I'm saying? That was my tag. Cool D. That was my name and shit. That was my tag. Now, my man Chill was nicer. You know, other cats did their thing, but you had to be versed in all of the elements. You know what I'm saying? So when I was putting on my tag, I was one of the and shit. You know what I'm saying? A piece on his hat and shit like that. That's what it was. So now we got some history out of the way, or at least a general history of who I am. So I don't want you to let, let the baby face fool you or something, think I'm some young cat and shit like that. You know what I mean? So now, I'm gonna do something really quick. I'm gonna do a, a hip hop fast and ritual, all right? Before we proceed any further, something we must do to ensure that we have a safe trip. This will be done so that we don't get caught up into thinking that the matrix of hip hop is real or locked into a negative frequency that's hard to escape. We must take a hip hop fast and do necessary rituals for protection. Fasts are taken for many reasons, some spiritual and some for health purposes. In this case, our hip hop fast will represent a little bit of both. The food we eat can bog us down, especially if these foods are heavy. It requires a tremendous amount of energy to process this food. This energy is drawn from all parts of the body, including the brain, to get the job done, leaving the body weak and drained and ready to shut down. In other words, niggeritis. All right? That's why most people need a nap after a good meal. It gets worse when the type of food we eat is added to the equation. You know what they say, you are what you eat. Foods that carry a dead vibration or dairy, which carries a low animalistic vibration, forces us to think on those levels. The same rule applied to terms of hip hop food, except this is food for thought that we're talking about. If all we eat from hip hop magazines, radio, and video is hoes, money, clothes, and other negative vibrations, then that's all we'll be able to act upon and live out. The food is to provide nourishment. If, if food is to provide nourishment, then food for thought is to provide knowledge. Fasts are needed to cleanse the mind and body to assist us in raising these vibrations. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, if you're going to grasp what I'm, you know, this information, take a hip hop fast. You know what I'm saying? Put, don't turn on the radio. I know it's hard to do. Don't turn on Hot 97. Don't pick up any hip hop magazines for, a few, for 30 days. I want you to do a 30 day fast with me. So watch the tape. And if you don't get what I'm talking about, take the hip hop fast and then watch it again. Because once you step out of something, it's easy to look in and, and, you know, in retrospect, see what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? So that's the easy part. You know what I'm saying? We're going to deal with the word, uh, 
We're going to deal with the rituals. All right? The ritual, the word ritual makes a lot of people nervous or spooked out. Most associated with being evil, satanic, paganistic, of the occult, or some magic mumbo jumbo that doesn't work anyway. If the current box you're operating within won't allow you to get past these myths and misconceptions, then you got to do what you feel, you know what I'm saying, in terms of a ritual to be comfortable. However, you better understand this. The very people that run the hip-hop matrix that have us on this physical and mental and spiritual lockdown do believe in rituals. Not only do they believe, but they perform them every chance they get. Pay attention to when they drop certain movies, albums, or major events. It usually revolves around moon cycles, the winter and summer solstices, spring and fall equinoxes, or special star alignments that enable them to tap into the energy source to use as they please. I don't have to tell you on how and what the fuck they're using their energy for. You know what I'm saying? Pay attention to when they drop these movies, albums, and stuff like that. They lining that shit up from a cosmic standpoint of view. We too busy in the hood thinking it ain't real. It's real. You seen in Fade to Black, when, when uh, Jay-Z went up in my boy crib, Rick Rubin, who he called an architect, by the way, we're gonna get into that shit. He had the book of what? Black and white magic, right up on his altar. He was, had them beads in his hand and shit. Looked like he was chanting some shit. What the fuck is that shit? He got the big ass beard and shit. They practicing something. Whether you choose to do so or not, that's on you. I'm just trying to show you what they do. All right, so what I want to do real quick is, nothing spooky, and see, you dealing with rituals whether you understand it or not. When you pour out a little liquor for your dead homie, that's pouring out a libation. It's the same shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just that you're not calling on that energy or trying to really line yourself up with that energy or them people who pass away because energy can never be destroyed. This shit just takes on a whole different form. So if I can tap into an energy source that's not of this physical plane and line up with that shit, that's more energy for me. You know what I mean? So every time you get out there and you pour a little liquor for your bed, homie, and shit, that's what you're doing. You're doing alchemy when you puff blunts. Those are the four elements, earth, air, fire, water, right there. Shit, the weed is from the earth. You know what I'm saying? The water, when you lick and tie that shit, that's the water. You know what I'm saying? The fire, when you spark that shit up, when that shit hits your lungs, that's air. That's earth, air, fire, water. Every time you take a blunt to the head, when you interface that shit with the melanin you got, oh, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm just tapping in. So if that's what you got to do, like for instance, we lit some incense, you know what I'm saying, which is alchemy as well transferring one thing from one stage to another. I meant to throw that up in my hip hop glossary, the word alchemy. We're talking about transferring something from one state to another. And you know, in, in these little alchemy books, they say, you know, you, you know, from base metals into gold. We talking about transferring man into God, basically. And I'm gonna show you how through hip hop, we do this. So I'm gonna pour out a little licky, liquor for some dead homies. These are gonna be all hip hop homies and shit. You know what I'm saying? And this is Hennessy, so they better appreciate this shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's call him uh, Cowboy from uh, from the Furious Five. Ah, uh, shit. Let's you know. Let's change it up. Let's say real hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So Cowboy, real, real fucking hip hop. Big pun. Real, real hip hop. Uh, Biggie. Real hip hop. Tupac. Real hip hop. Uh, my man, uh, who was that, Freaky Ty? Real, real hip hop. Real hip -hop. Big L. Big L. Real, real hip hop. Come on, give me some more of them hip hop homies. ODB. ODB. Real hip hop. Shit, two for ODB. Real hip hop. Real hip -hop. Tupac. Tupac. Real hip -hop. All right. To all those other hip hop homies who have made a contribution to the art form of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Whether your name is known or unknown to us. You have made a contribution, whether it was carrying the crates. Whatever you did to make a contribution to this art form, which is now with something else. This is shit hop now. But the true art form, we want to say real hip hop to you, Ashe. Ashe. That's what we're talking about. All right, so now, now we can do a lecture. All that shit I was doing was just clearing my throat, you know, setting this shit up. All right, let me get a shot of this shit. Just a taste. Just a taste. Feel free to come up and get a taste, you know what I'm saying? All right, let me sit down for this for a minute. 
You ready for me, bad? You want to change the tape or we still good? We got time? We got time, bro. All right, boom, boom, boom. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I got to actually, I want to put up this same dude again, you know what I'm saying? Put him up, because we're going to be, you know what I'm saying, using him as our reference point. You know, we'll just put his head up and shit in this one. All right. I want to show you how we create a prison using words. I'm going to break down nine basic programs that are used to trap you in. So we got the hip hop nigga in there. He's chilling. He's got his little b-boy stance and shit. All right. All right. Now that we have taken our first steps into the matrix, let's look at the big picture. This is only a table because we collectively agree or are taught that it is. Those who bring about these agreements and teach us through words, education, religion, superstition, food, music, time, and light create and control our reality. If you break down the word matrix, ma equals mother, or in this case, womb, and tricks is an illusion. So we'll put that up there too. We'll say this equals mother, or, you know, womb, and tricks. Just what it is. I know tricks, chicks turning tricks on the app. No, it's an illusion. So in our essence, we've been birthed into an illusion. And I want you to keep this in mind because we're dealing with hip hop. Everything is hip hop. We've been birthed into an illusion of what we think hip hop is. All right? All right, bear with the God. All right, it's not real. However, our perception makes it very real. The mind doesn't know what's real and what's not real until perception enters the picture. When one is limited to the basic sensory of perception, which is see, touch, hear, smell, and taste, this makes it even much more harder to determine what is real and what is the matrix. The matrix has written certain programs designed to fool our perception into believing that it is real. In a nutshell, fellas, this is what the matrix is all about. However, we must tap into our sixth sense and beyond to crack open the nutshell to understand the inner workings if we are to defeat it. All right? Words. Let's, let's just make it seem like this is a program. Words. Words. All right? Let's look at that. You know how in the matrix, the, you know, the numbers and shit is coming down? We want to use letters and shit, so words. All right? Words are power. When spoken, they vibrate. The stronger the word is, the heavier the vibration it carries. This is especially true if it is spoken in one of its original languages like Latin or Hebrew. The old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me, is bullshit. Words can crush you or lift your spirits. Words can motivate, inspire, or enlighten you. For centuries, prophets have been moved the masses of the people armed with nothing more than the words. Monks have been known to chant words like Om for, the year, for years to raise their vibration. The word itself is composed of the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. The earth is represented by the tongue. Air is needed to form and pronounce words. Water is represented by the saliva in the mouth, and when combined with the movement of the tongue, you spit fire. The Bible states in the beginning was the word. When these words resonate from the heart, they hit their targets in the heart, which becomes a measurement of the truth it contains. The Matrix has designed programs to put out this fire and corrupt the word, mainly through the use of the English language. English is a fairly new language and doesn't vibrate very high when its words are pronounced, as opposed to the Hebrew language, which vibrates very high. Now, this is not to say that the Matrix doesn't operate within other languages. It has programs for any and all languages. But English has the lowest vibration and enables the matrix to receive maximum results from its efforts to dumb down and control the masses. These same words with no power are used to describe and give life to our reality. Once we accept and download these words, we give them power to control our lives. The matrix then creates an artificial vibration to add to these words, some very high and some very low. Each word is designed to affect you in one way or another. For example, words like racist, anti-Semitic, slander, nigger, pedophile, and so on, all carry a negative vibration. Words like black, white, communist, democratic, republican, blood and crip, all carry a divisive vibration. This is how the matrix uses words to control. 
It's a complex system with many words having multiple meanings that make it difficult to master. Even if you mastered the English language, you still couldn't defeat the Matrix. Shit, it's like trying to defeat your favorite video game. It knows every possible move that you can make before you make it. However, the English language and the power of words in general puts us one step closer to victory. All right, now the English language is a bunch of shit. You know that. You know and by using these words, you fall right into what they want you to, you know what I'm saying, how to, how to control you. The spelling, as Brother Phil Valentine broke it down, the spelling of these words is putting you under some kind of hypnotosis, you know what I'm saying? So you using their words, and they're becoming powerful and you not. Now, as I'll break down a little later, that's why we change the vibrations of certain words in hip hop. If we kept the word the same, but hot, death, flavor, we gave them a whole different vibration. You know what I'm saying? And once we changed the vibration, then we was able to use the word in a whole different context. Let me show you how they counted that, though. Now they got slang in the dictionary. So now anybody can use the fucking word. Once they start putting our slang words in the dictionary, they're killing the vibration to the word that we created. Now white people can say daff and great and you know what I'm saying, it's fucking hot, man. Bling bling is in the dictionary now. You see what I'm saying? So once they do that, that's how they counter the energy from the words that we're using because they know this ain't our language. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, fuck it. Speaking in general is fucking low vibration shit. We didn't have to speak. We, we dealt with, you know what I'm saying, mind to mind. Speaking is when we fell down the chakras. You know what I'm saying? We had to fucking speak, grunt and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's devils and shit like that. Now, let's go back to my next program, a word on the program list. Education. Now, you may say, what the fuck does this have to do with hip hop? But I'm going to show you. So now I'm going to show you how you box yourself in. The word education derives from the Latin word educare, which means to draw out that which is in. That means whatever there is to know, you already know. It just has to be brought out of you in a certain way. In ancient times, the methods used to educate included music, storytelling, writings, pictures, dance, and real life situations that involved a lot of interaction between student and teacher. The rise of our educational system today structured to force shit and information into us as opposed to drawing out. Because the matrix doesn't want you to rely on what you know naturally. It wants you to rely on what you have been artificially inseminated with. It only wants you to access files that have been downloaded into your brain and not tap into the files that are encoded in your DNA that would give you access to infinite knowledge. Seventh chakra, infinite knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So they don't want you fucking with that. From preschool to high school, we are downloaded with the basic educational package of science, history, reading, and writing. Now, math is universal, but the way that it is taught to us stifles our ability to master it properly and use it to unlock the matrix. Albert Einstein said math is the key to the universe. Shit, even he knew that. But didn't he fuck up trying to go higher than six? He busts his brain cells trying to get higher than six or some shit? Trying to go where God can go? He can't go where they play. Busts his brain cells up and shit. You know what I'm saying? If that's the case, then miseducating us when it comes to math is the matrix number one priority. From an early age, we are placed in overcrowded classrooms with dim fluorescent lighting and boring teachers as a part of a dumbed down process to manufacture robots. The hallways and lunchrooms are gloomy, and it's no coincidence that they resemble prison cells and mess halls. If we follow the program set up by the Matrix to, uh, successfully, that's exactly the course of destination for many of us, from school to prison. We're flooded with information and then instructed to memorize it at a rapid pace. We are then tested to make sure that we have accepted this information as truth. That's what school is all about. You know what I'm saying? That's why I could always flourish in school even when I didn't fucking go. I, I, I was out in the hallway puffing weed, but I knew right before the test all I had to do was study the shit. And it would piss the teachers off because I never showed up for class. But I'd get 80s and 90s on the fucking test. You know what I'm saying? Because I had the ability to retain information. That's all school is about. You know what I'm saying? Truth is the basis of our, uh, uh, this is the basis of our information, uh, education. The better your memory, the more you can excel under this system. 
However, that's exactly the plan. Have their information seep, information seep deep down into the memory bank of your subconscious mind so that you can begin to act out on what you have been downloaded or what you have downloaded. Once we finish the initial 12 step program, which is high school, we move on to more advanced levels of brainwash programming. So it's safe to say that going to school will only make you dumber. Let me say that again. Going to school will only make you fucking dumb. All right? It's just that it's just that plain and simple. Now, I'm not saying that you can't go in and navigate around things and get something out of it, but if you just dare to be programmed, that's all the fuck you're going to do is be dumber. And the further you advance, the dumber you become because it only shows how much you have accepted the programs that the matrix has set up to control you. You are then paid very well for following orders and keeping the matrix strong. It's important that we come free thinkers and go against the grain of the matrix because that's the only way we can short circuit the system. All right? Education, in their sense of the word. All right, I'm lining all of this up. I want y'all to pay attention because all of this is going to play. When I get dead into just beats and rhymes and shit, this is all going to play a major role. All right. Religion. Ooh. Uh. All right, so he's about to be boxed in. You know what I'm saying? With all the bars and shit. All right. Forget my artistic work. Religion is a touchy subject for most especially if you are operating out of one of the preset boxes that the matrix has set up for you. Now let me set this up over here. All right, let's put a box here. Let's put a box here. Ah, fuck it, put a box there. All right, so in this box we'll put, let's say Christianity. In this box, Islam and Judaism. Those are the main three, right? So to speak, there's plenty others. Well, folks are making up their own religion. Now hip-hop is a religion and shit. <laughs> Curtis Blow has got his own church up in the Bronx. Yeah, he's doing like some hip-hop religion stuff. I love Curtis, but Curtis, I don't... You know what? I'm going to come to your church one day and I'm going to sit down. I got to do the story. I can't just, I can't just, you know, blast him out because he might be on some esoteric shit. Now, his name might be Reverend, Reverend Curtis. Reverend Blow. <laughs> Reverend Blow. Red and blue. All right. Religion is a touchy subject for most, especially if you are operating out of one of the preset boxes that the Matrix has set up for you. Each religion has its own box, and its followers are confined to it. Yet they're not confined to it by force. In fact, even if the box had an exit door, most of its followers would choose to remain inside. Or even if the, ex even if the box had an exit door, most motherfuckers would rather stay inside. This is because the particular religion that has them confined, whether it's Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, or any of the other numerous religions that people allow themselves to be boxed into, is all that they know and all that they wish to know. They were born, raised, and born again within the walls of these religious boxes. Even for those who do not believe in God, the Matrix has found a way to turn being an atheist into a religion. Ain't that some shit? Thus creating a box for those followers as well. The matrix is out to control your mind, body, and soul, and it has a box for each. The mind is held captive in the box of education, and the body is held, cap held captive in prison cells. However, the most important box for them to control is the one that contains your soul. That's where religion comes in. Praise God. Long after the mind and body have decayed, the soul will remain. The soul is our direct line to God, the creator, the supreme being, the one, even Lucifer, depending on which box you operate out of. All right, depending on which box you operate out of, right? When functioning properly, this line will enable, uh, the soul is our direct line, right? So when functioning properly, this line will enable one to truly know thyself. Religion has placed a splice in the line and redirected the calls. All right, why? What is, the matrix, what is it that the matrix doesn't want you to know about the true link between you and God? Perhaps that you are God. So they use religion to keep the lines tied up and busy so that you can't complete the one connection that can free you forever. Religion as it is used today is nothing more than a tool by the masses to keep us subservient by capturing the highest essence of oneself in a box that's hard for most to escape. Religion is also big business. Niggas is big pimping in the church. Motherfuckers is rolling around on 24 hours, nigga. 
fucking rims are spinning. The reverend is leaned back, nigga, like this. That's serious shit right there. So while they're holding your soul captive in a box, they're also draining your pockets as well. The nerve of the matrix. Yet all forms of religion are not that bad. There are two basic forms of religion that I like to focus on. Exoteric and esoteric. We talked about that earlier, right? The esoteric is what is given to the masses. It keeps them, the exoteric, it keeps them searching for God outside of themselves. In fact, the very word esoteric, exoteric means outer. As long as the matrix are looking out, as long as the masses are looking outside of themselves for answers, it allows the matrix to control them. Esoteric means inner. All right, those who study esoteric religion know and understand that the power of God lies within them. That's where the true power of God can be attained. Christianity is the exoteric. Gnosticism or the Gnostic scriptures would be the esoteric. Judaism, out of shit. The Kabbalah or the Tree of Life would be considered the esoteric. Islam, exoteric. That's some out of shit. The Sufism or the Sufi teachings would be more of the esoteric. You know what I'm saying? I mean the esoteric. Our goal is to conquer each box until there are no boxes left to conquer. It is only then that we can unleash the God within ourselves to bring the matrix to his knees. So when I'm talking, this is right here, this will be the exoteric. Everything seems to be divided apart, but when you go deeper, you see that all them damn boxes are connected. All that shit is the same shit. Three minutes, oh, three minutes, okay. So when you're just dealing with religion on the surface of things, it's, it, everybody's against each other. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you, I'm Christian, I'm, I'm Jew, I'm this, that. I follow Buddha, I smoke Buddha, you know, whatever the case may be. All of them religions are tied to each other when you start going real fucking deep. Superstitions, let's all, oh, I gotta put up the superstitions box. Super stitions. All right, motherfuckers is boxed in my superstitions, too. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm a blaze through some of this stuff. This is what the Matrix fears the most. One's ability to believe or have faith that an action, object, or circumstance that is not logically connected to the course of events can influence its outcome. Those who believe in superstitions live on the realm of the illogical and unexplainable. In other words, the magic realm. The key to its effectiveness is one's faith and belief. This is the only thing that can give a superstition true life. The matrix knows that the only way that it can survive and have power over you is your faith and belief in it, and only it. So it has created tons of negative press around superstitions to discredit them. It also uses methods to circumvent energy from superstitions that could generate real power by flooding the mainstream with thousands of made up superstitions that have no real power at all. This is to confuse and deter you from tapping into power, any power greater than the matrix. It's also done to keep the superstitions with real power reserved for the chosen few. There are many superstitions that people believe in, like never walk under a ladder, if you break a mirror, seven years, bad luck, black cats are bad luck. When you open an umbrella in the house, you know, don't do that kind of shit anymore. When these superstitions, whether these superstitions hold true or not, or are force-fed to us by the matrix to confuse us is besides the point. The fact that these type of superstitions are minute in power and don't threaten the reign that the matrix has over us is the real issue. So whether you believe that shit or not, it doesn't have no power, so they don't really fucking care. Superstitions in the form of witchcraft, black magic, satanic worship, voodoo, and sorcery are the ones that the matrix uses all of its forces to make sure that you flee from Yet these are the very superstitions that they guard very heavily. You ever notice that? You, they give you all that Christianity shit, all of walk on the black line. Don't fuck with this shit. Why is that? You know what I'm saying? Because they want to keep that energy source tight. If you keep pulling on, if something is an energy source, let's say this whole shit right here was Christianity, and we keep feeding into it, pulling off that energy. Ain't no energy left in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no energy. Everybody, Jesus, Jesus. Shit, it ain't no energy there. But the satanic shit, some energy left in that. I'm saying the, the, the occult science shit, they don't fuck with. And they do that for a reason. You know what I'm saying? On that note, note we're going to take a small break, 
and we're gonna come back because we gotta change the tape. At nature. Now, my man, uh, 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 Will just told me something about, as I was breaking down superstitions, when I talked about seven years bad luck, when you break a mirror, it's supposed to be seven years bad luck. He was saying that back in the day, mirrors were so expensive that when you broke one, it might be seven years before you can buy a new one and shit. So that's where that particular terminology comes from, the number 13. And they always tell you that's a bad luck number. Stay away from that number. It's because that number actually means what? It means power and dominion over others. Power and dominion over others. So you got the 13 colonies, 13 stars and flag, 13 stripes, this and that. But they, some, some buildings don't even have the 13th floor. That's right. They don't even want you to walk on that floor and tap into some shit. You might walk on that floor and wake up and shit. Like, oh shit, I'm God. It might happen. <laughs> So they don't even want you to fuck with that because they got to preserve that for themselves. So we're still dealing with superstitions, right? So uh, I'm going to pick it up from here. The matrix will guard the answers to these questions at all costs. Rule of thumb, whatever the matrix tells you to stay away from, you should run to. Whatever the matrix tells you is, uh, is right for you, think the exact opposite. In most cases, this will lead you closer to the truth. Run to witchcraft. Run to Satan, run to voodoo and black magic, because it's obvious that there's something there that the matrix is trying to hide within its superstitions that it deems very dangerous to its existence. All right? Even when you're getting information from off the television, whatever they tell you, if you think the exact opposite of what they say, your ass to be closer to the truth. Understand what's going on, the game that's being played. It's a serious game, all right? The system is set up for logical and linear thought process. It cannot defend itself against illogical thoughts and actions. Believe in the unbelievable. Have faith in forces that the matrix can't even comprehend. Then sit back and watch these forces go to work on behalf, on our behalf, to bring the matrix to its knees. So the whole matrix system of hip hop is set up in such a linear way that if you begin to think abstract to that, you can fuck the system up. All right? But if you're thinking linear shit, straightforward shit, you're not, you know what I'm saying? Then you're going to be falling into the trap. So let's get to the next word that's fucking people up, or the next program, should I say. That's fucking heads up. We'll put it twice. Food. Food. See, he getting boxed in slowly but surely. You know what I'm saying? Before he was just chilling and shit, had his hat to the side. Now we boxing his ass in with these programs and shit. As I mentioned in the hip-hop ritual, you are what you eat. It's a phrase that we've all heard before, but how many of us truly abide by it or have even given serious consideration to its validity? If we eat animal flesh, then we become animalistic in our actions. If we eat poison foods, then our thought process becomes poison. It's just that simple. And this law is not just restricted to the physical. If we mentally, if you're mentally eating sex, violence, and destructive behavior, it will most certainly manifest through your physical actions. So if all you're seeing on BET is sex, violence, and drugs, and that's what you're mentally intaking, you will then act out you know, those kind of actions. <clears throat> Excuse me. What the eyes eat feeds the mind. Just as a car needs fuel to run, we too need fuel to operate. Yet the type of fuel that we put in our bodies will determine if we are operating sluggishly or at peak performance. The number one weapon the matrix used to control us is food. He who controls the food controls the people. Niggas ain't eating, it's gonna be some problems. And that's food for thought. Any kind of food, niggas ain't eating, it's gonna be some problems. I be driving around with my girl and shit, and you know, I can go a long time when I'm eating and shit. And her ass will spaz out. She'd be ready to fucking kill me. And it'd just be three hours and shit. We'd be riding by and shit. She'd be like, I gotta eat now. I'd be like, God damn, she's serious with that. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta take fast, you know what I'm saying? People make a big deal about taking fast. You know, I, I can go nine days and shit, God. I'm from the hood, son. You know what I'm saying? It was days and I couldn't eat. I was seven years old. So when you tell me you're taking your little fast and shit, I'm not impressed with that shit. Nigga, I ate sleep for dinner. <laughs> As Biggie said, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, that kind of shit. Five cent gums, not knowing where your meal's coming from. That kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? But fast are good, but don't make a big deal about it. There's families out here who ain't got no food. Many days niggas gotta eat fucking bags of chips. I remember eating bag of chips and that was dinner. Look, look, nigga, better take them chips, run along. 
Go play, nigga. Dream about a meal or something. All right. So he who controls the food controls the people. The proper food provides us with nourishment, yada, yada, yada. For instance, eating fruits and vegetables, yada, yada, yada. I don't need to tell y'all that, but I got to put some of this stuff on the tape for these hip-hop cats who may not grasp these concepts, all right? So bear with me for you guys who have fallen asleep, you high advanced metaphysicians. All right. All right, the exact opposite holds true for food that are hazardous to your health. It can weaken the body and, you know, feed us misinformation, disinformation, and keep us totally out of tune with nature. The matrix has created an artificial environment that we live in. We as a people have adapted well to this environment, mainly due to all of the artificial foods that we eat. You know what I'm saying? If we live in an artificial environment, what keeps that going is the artificial foods that we eat. For them, should I say. Foods that have been manufactured by the matrix, of course. It has served as the perfect conducer to feed us artificial information that we have accepted as our reality. Even if the fruits and vegetables that grow from the earth have been laced with animal DNA and other toxins that make it difficult to receive the necessary information that would enable us to escape the illusion that is the matrix. Everything that we eat is polluted. In the beginning stages of programming, the matrix doesn't want to deprive you of food, but to make sure that you overindulge in it and all the wrong types of food at that. Over a course of time, this makes eating more habitual than essential, all right? Once you develop a habit for food, you become dependent on it. Thus, it begins to master you, and you become a slave to it. Once you become a slave to food, the matrix can then move to phase two, which is to deprive you of it. We are then at the total mercy of the matrix. We are in a constant state of devolution when it comes to what we call food. In our highest state of being, we were solarians. We live off the solar energy and shit. We didn't even need meals and shit. We just, the sun came out, we ate. You know what I mean? All right, then we became liquidarians. You know what I'm saying? Just dealing with liquids, fruitarians, vegetarians, and then, you know, straight up fucking meat eaters. That's what we are now. We just straight up fucking, you know, we just see anything that moves and shit. At our lowest point, the matrix has seized the opportunity to set up shop. This has hindered our ability to reascend. We are in an information lockdown, as Brother Phil would say. The food we eat today has no informative value. The answers we seek, food can no longer provide. The creator of the universe is trying to talk to you. He is trying to provide you with the keys needed to unlock the mystery to the matrix. All right? Yet the calls are going unheard because the channels have been switched. By genetically altering the food, we will only receive messages transmitted by the matrix cleverly disguised as the creator. We then process this information as it is authentic. Once it seeps into our d DNA, it's a wrap. At that point, Every thought that we have ever generated or generated is by the matrix. This eventually becomes our food for thought. In order to accelerate our exodus from the matrix, we must begin to take spiritual, mental, and physical fast, cleansing our bodies in all levels that will help us shed the unwanted pounds of the illusion that the matrix has burdened us with. It is only then that we can be able to see clearly, think clearly, and tune back into the frequency of the creator, all right? All the foods we eat. Now, once you become an advanced motherfucker, you don't have to eat or you can eat any fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? Because you understand that all is mental. You know what I'm saying? The mind override all that. But in the state that we are as hip hoppers, you know what I'm saying? We got to at least run by some kind of guidelines to keep ourselves sort of in tune to what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Every time I turn on the TV, nigga trying to sell me a candy bar or something, Snickers or something. And rappers are doing that shit now. You know what I'm saying? All rappers do is sell me shit now. You ever notice that? You turn on the radio, that's all the fuck they do is selling me shit. From this to that, that's all they're doing. Now I can't even trust what the fuck they're telling me because they're selling me some shit. Yo, yo, look at this, look at this. I'm going to watch my shoes. I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? What happened to real hip-hop when, you know what I'm saying, brothers just dropped their messages? You know what I'm saying? And we can tie all that shit back into the architect, Rick Rubin, anyway, with the Run DMC shit. I know Russell was involved with that shit, too. You know what I'm saying? With the run the MC selling the sneakers and shit like that, moved us from one dimension to a next. And I'm gonna break that down as we move into music. That's why we're here. The music that we love. 
the head about to be trapped in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we about to box homeboy in. All right, music is the gateway. The gateway to what you may ask. The gateway to healing, the gateway to spirituality, the gateway to inner and outer body experiences, even the gateway to other dimensions. It is the one true universal language that speaks to the highest self of all. Our ancestors used the power of music for all of these purposes and many more. Music for me, entertainment was near the bottom of the scale. The right chord, hymn, or drum sound that resonates to the core of one's essence can work wonders for the soul. As we mentioned earlier, music is for healing. When I want to heal, I throw on Al Green. You know what I'm saying? It's something about that Al Green shit that really takes me to a whole nother level. Maybe because that was my pop's favorite. You know what I'm saying? My pop's favorite was Al Green. And I want to big up my pops, uh, who was licensed to preach at 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? He was licensed to preach at 12. He received his lessons at 16 and became Tumar. He also wrote, Neither One of Us Wants to Be the First to Say Goodbye by Gladys Knight and the Pips. My pops wrote that song and sold that song for 40 bucks. You know, back then, you know, niggas ain't knowing shit. But my whole family understands what happens then. Uh, my uncle, my cousin's pops, uh, he actually um, holds the Guinness Book of World Records for writing uh, the most songs in one year. His name is Gene Kitt. I'm going to throw that out into the record books and so forth and so on. Big up, Unc. You know what I'm saying? So um, as I'm sitting up here speaking, I'm like, I'm really at fucking home. This is what you know, Pops did and so forth and so on. Big up, Moms. She passed away. Uh, Friday was the five-year anniversary that Moms went on to the next level. <clears throat> so uh, let me get back to what I was doing. Just wanted to throw that out there because I didn't want to fucking forget it. All right, this allows one to unleash the power of visualization, which is imperative because our ancestors taught that all is mental. Yet we live in a world of dualities. So for all of the positive energy and attributes that music have to offer, there are those who know the science of music well and can use its power for the exact opposite. All right, so we use music for healing. There are motherfuckers who can put shit in music, laced, and this and that to fuck us up. You know what I'm saying? So we got to keep that in mind too. There are certain sounds that carry low or negative vibrations that can trigger the dark side of our emotions, like anger, hate, sorrow, and pain. You know what I'm saying? There are also music that are geared toward our conscious and subconscious mind, each having a different effect on our psyche. All right, with the technology of today, like ELF, which stands for extremely low frequencies, the music can easily be tampered with. Harmful messages can be placed into the music that is so low that the naked ear cannot detect but sound as loud as a boombox to the subconscious mind. Understand that. It, to the naked ear, you can't hear that shit, but to the subconscious mind, that shit is like speaking to you, like I'm speaking to you now. You know what I'm saying? And you understand the power of certain music. I'm talking about back in the day in the jam shit, when they threw on certain shit, I wanted to get thugged out on these niggas. You know what I'm saying? And certain joints where you just sat back, you know what I'm saying? And you was in your B-boy stance. This shit right here is a science. This is a B-boy. This is some sacred geometry shit. You know what I'm saying? So when they say B-boy, they didn't always mean the niggas was spinning on their head and shit. Nigga, this was B-boy, nigga. Had his hat tilted a certain way. And that's a, a, a language I can speak to another brother across the jam in a certain way. Like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? This is how we do it, nigga. That's just the way it was. So certain music, you know what I'm saying? This makes you feel a certain way. Certain shit make you want to go out and party. And then certain niggas want to shut the jam down by busting a few shots in the air. That's what we're talking about. All right? Y'all still with me, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, in the early 80s, Run DMC put out a song called Walk This Way with the rock group Aerosmith. Now, if you play the chorus to this song in reverse, instead of the words saying walk this way, they actually say hell Satan. Hell Satan! Listen to it closely. Hell Satan and walk this way. You know what I'm saying? So that's the shit, the reverse shit that's being played on your mind. And you know, them Aerosmith motherfuckers, I'm not surprised they was fucking white boys and shit. It's what they did. You know, I'm pretty sure Run DMC didn't know that at the time. They was just trying to fuse their music, you know what I'm saying, with some devils and create something else. But I'm pretty sure they didn't know that at the time. All right? All right. The Matrix has trained us to think and hear in linear patterns even though our brains are far more complex. 
We are taught that if it doesn't make logical sense, then it doesn't make sense at all. This logical portion of our brain, the left hemisphere, is the only 10% of its full potential. And since the average person only uses 10% of the brain's capacity, which is the logical or analytical portion, this leaves plenty of space for the manipulators to work with. They can send hidden signals and messages at the part of our brains that we rarely consciously access. These signs can be right in your face, but just outside of the frequency of the 10% that we are trained to use, and we won't be able to see or hear them. It's like they're invisible. This is why it's hard for the average person to detect or even believe that something so horrible could be taking place. The word music derives from the Greek word muse, which is the culmination of the arts, sciences, and humanities. Amenities. Uh, you know, history, comedy, music, tragedy, lyric, poetry, and dance. Erotic poetry, storytelling, astronomy, and heroic, epic, and eloquence. These are all part of the muse. This sounds like hip hop to me. Shit, just in a different form. Same shit, different day. These nine muses are cultivated into the creation portion of the right hemisphere of the brain, the 90%. This is how we make the unknown known. It is also the reason that the so-called black people thrive in these areas. We can all do this shit from the, because we're dealing with the creative portion of our brain. Music and art, that shit we do, we don't have to think about it. We don't need to take no classes, none of that shit. It just is. You know what I'm saying? I had my son, my 18-year-old son, uh, when he was about 11, I sent him to take like fucking classical keyboard lessons and shit. And don't get me wrong, it's good to know how to read music and shit like that, but it was so fucking boring. And he dropped out because it was so fucking boring. But had I had some hip-hop producers come in and play some shit that he was familiar with, you know what I'm saying, because he still can read the music, he would have been more successful. And I had to tell his moms that, because she wanted him to play classical Russian music and shit, you know? In fact, the famous museum of Alexandria founded in, by Ptolemy I, whatever the fuck, was a temple of learning dedicated to the music, uh, muses. Music can free us or enslave us. The Matrix knows this. We must begin to listen to the music again as opposed to just hearing it. There lie the keys to the story being told through the music that can reconnect us to our ancestors and put a ripple in hip-hop's grand design. We must begin to really listen to the music again and get into the music as opposed to just being programmed by the music or only hearing it. You know what I'm saying? When you listen to Eminem rhyme, you're hearing him. You're not listening. That shit ain't tapping into your melanin source. It's impossible for him to fucking do that. You know what I'm saying? Not to get on his case, but fuck him. All right, time. All right. <clears throat> All of these are still relating to hip hop. The words we use, your level of a so-called education or training that we broke down. It's a religious war going on in hip hop now and shit. You know what I'm saying? Kanye West, Jesus walks and shit. They trying, the Wu held up the Wu flan to say, yo, you know what I'm saying? You know, the black man is God. We got the Wu Jew now, you know what I'm saying? He on the board trying to make this a three-way fucking war on the board. Pay attention, there's a lot of shit going on. Superstition and shit you believe in and shit you don't believe in. The food we eat, you know what I'm saying? The weed we, we puff that ain't really good weed no more and shit. Shit like that. The very music that we listen to, this shit is our life. You know what I'm saying? Especially these young hip hop heads, man, it's, it's really sickening. And we're gonna deal with time because you gotta know how to manage time and understand how they run in this game. It has been said that time is an illusion. It doesn't really exist. If this is the case, then, if this is the case, then how can we be so caught up in something that is not real? Or how, and how can something that is not real govern our lives? Which leads me to ask the question, are we real? Are these bodies and all that we see around us some form of hologram? Or is it that the only way we can utilize our bodies and participate in this hologram called life, we must be subjected to this thing called time? Yet when we sleep and enter the dream world or the dark realm, you know what I'm saying, the dark side, time seems to be suspended. We can partake in great adventures in our dreams that seem to last for hours. Yet when we open our eyes, only 10 minutes have lapsed. When we're asleep, are we really asleep and vice versa? Or, you know, are we really awake? Could the dream world be the real world where time doesn't exist? 
If this is the case, then this may explain why we spend so much of our time, one third of our lives, in the dream world. If you live 30 years old and you sleep eight hours a day, which is supposed to be average, I sleep eight, nine hours a day. I don't get up for shit. That's 10 years. Now, you can't just discount that 10 years of your life. Some shit is going on in that 10 years. That's a long fucking time to be in the dream world on the other side of shit. You know what I'm saying? So start paying attention to the dream world of shit, because that's really critical. 10 years is a long goddamn time. Even those who black out have no recollection of time. This proves that one can rise above the laws of time. Yet those with the proper knowledge of time can manipulate it as they see fit or use time to manipulate others. Do we really know the exact day and time that we live in? Or are we under the influence of a program written by someone else that has us living on their timetable? You know what I'm saying? That's key. If so, this only serves their agenda. How can we prepare for certain spiritual cosmic events that our ancestors foretold about if we don't know the exact time the events were scheduled to take place? Meanwhile, those who know the time put themselves in posi position to receive the energy that was meant for us. These white boys are doing rituals, man. You know what I'm saying? Rick Rubin, you saw it in, I gotta say it again, you saw it in Fade to Black. He had the black and the book of black and white magic with the big ass beard and shit. They doing magic. Whether you choose to do so or not, it's on you. But they lined up, they got their shit synced up to certain times and events that take place. All right? The majority of us are subjected to the lowest levels of time programming, a nine to five. Our lives revolve around a job that is actually takes up far more time than the eight hours that it appears to. The before and after effects of a grueling schedule of chasing the dollar, which is equivalent to time because time is money. You know what I'm saying? Which is energy. As Tef breaks down, that shit is, it's really not even about the money because the money ain't worth shit. It's about your energy being involved with something that's not fucking real. You know what I'm saying? All day fucking long, all day fucking long. You know what I'm saying? All day long chasing shit. And that's time. Time that you need to study. Time that you need to find out what's really going on. This is how they pull off the illusion. A magician's greatest tool is misdirection. You know what I'm saying? So how do you fucking you know, pull the wool over the whole world's eyes. Misdirection. That's why there's a sports event going on like clockwork. Every soon as basketball season is over, football season kicks in, baseball, all that shit is cyclic. You know, and there's a, a, a new movie coming out, a new album coming out, a new commercial, a new worldly event. Shit, you barely got time to think for yourself, and you have become robotic, all of us, <clears throat> to a certain degree. All right. This may not seem significant to many, but it is. The more time and energy we focus on the matrix agenda, the less time we have to focus on our own. This makes us time slaves who will never be able to master our own destiny. We all would like to study more, but we don't have time. We all would like to meditate more, but we don't have time. We all would like to eat better, but we don't have time. You know what I'm saying? I like to give my girl that third nut, but I ain't got time. <laughs> shit, she lucky she get one nut now and shit. And that's, I mean, I'm just keeping it real, but that's just fucked up shit. Because I'm busy, I got other shit to do, I'm making moves and shit. <clears throat> Collectively, our dreams are never fulfilled because time will not allow it, and then we die. So time as it is currently used to contain us is the enemy. Our true understanding of time can make it an ally. This is when time travel and time manipulation becomes possible. Our mastery of time will mean one thing. Our mastery of time will mean one thing and one thing only. Time is up for the matrix. Once we understand that time is an illusion that we're living in and we can bypass that shit, do all that, this matrix that they got set up keeps me on the grind and keep you on the grind and shit. It's a wrap. And the last program that we'll talk about before we get into some real hip-hop shit. I don't niggas want to hear about what's going on and shit. It's light. All right? Critical. Under the flesh, we are nothing more than spinning wheels of light. These wheels are called chakras by the agents, and we broke that down for those, those of y'all just got here. We did like a hip-hop layman's terms glossary, which for hip-hop cats who are not familiar with certain words and stuff like that and stuff like chakras, I broke it down to an average hip hop or a puff and an L at home and get a general understanding. So we don't need to really go through that. 
These wheels are called shackles by the ancients, yada, yada, yada. You know the colors and what they do. Yet the more light we can activate from within ourselves, the more light we can process from outside of ourselves. Melanin-based people can pick up a greater spectrum of rays, including gamma rays and cosmic rays, especially if the proper chakras are activated. The ultimate goal is to raise the energy level from the root chakra to the crown chakra. This will bring about the highest degree of illumination. Illumination means light, and light represents the truth because it allows one to see through the darkness. One of the most powerful secret society calls themselves the Illuminati because it claims to know, this is light, what you do not, you in the dark. And in order to keep the masses in the dark, the art of light deception must be practiced from the most mundane to the grandest scale. From the fluorescent lighting in the classrooms that assist in stunting your learning process to the sun, which is the supreme light of the planet. From the internal to the external, the matrix is in control of the light. What we are trained to eat, drink, and think limits the awakening on the higher chakras. The chemtrails and the aluminum particles sprayed in the atmosphere, which is used to deflect the true light and energy from the sun, yet give off an illusion that we are being fed by the sun takes care of the outer source of light. That's what these chemtrails is all about, you know what I'm saying? These aluminum particles, when the sun is supposedly beaming, hitting you, you know what I'm saying? That shit is sending some kind of weird reflection of light. When I tell you we're an illusion, we're an illusion. The matrix must keep us surf suffering from light deprivation because it is the only way that it can really rule over us. Once the light is turned on, the illumination that is the matrix will be revealed. The greatest mystery that the matrix is trying to keep from us is that, is that there is more than one color of light that emanates from the heavens that we can tap into. There are actually three colors of light, white, black, and clear. Most of us are familiar with the white light because it makes up the visible spectrum. What we see is what we tend to believe, and that's where the matrix would like to keep our focus to end because it can control what we see. All right, so the black light represents the invisible spectrum or the unseen. The 90% of the universe is invisible to us. Some shit going on out there. You know what I mean? So we want to keep with that. All right, where do we go? All right. When you enter a dark room and you turn on the light, where does the darkness go? It doesn't disappear. It's still, it's still there occupying the same space as the white light. It's just being overshadowed. The black light is also very powerful. So even, when, even though the matrix is trying its best to manipulate the white light, we can still raise ourselves up by tapping into the black light. Then there's the most potent of the three, and that's called the colorless or the God light. This light is basically clear, yet it is what makes up the black and white light. This light is the most dangerous for the matrix if one can have mastery over the visible and invisible, he or she will be able to truly see things clearly. That's why it's called the clear light. The end result will surely mean lights out for the matrix. <laughs> now, by now you're probably saying, well, 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 well black dot, like what the fuck does all this have to do with hip hop? Everything. Our ancestors always taught, as above, so below. What's going on in the heavens is taking place on the earth. This is always, this is always a, there is always a macro, microcosm to the macrocosm. With that being said, we must understand that the same programs that the matrix has designed to run the world are the same programs used by the matrix you know, to run hip hop, just on a smaller scale. The hip hop nation is just that, a nation. How? Can a small group of people in the world control so many? They must have a system in place to do so. You know what I'm saying? How can a minority, a real minute amount of people control so many? They got to have programs running and programs in place to do just that. That system is generally based on the eight or nine aforementioned programs that we discussed. I felt that it was pertinent to give you a brief overview of these programs to show you how they relate to hip hop. Now, they have many books on each one of these subjects, you know what I'm saying, that you can study and get, you know, extensive. And I just wanted to, you know, show you how these relate to hip-hop because now, we, after I break this down, we're going to get into some straight hip-hop shit. And I don't want to have to repeat myself because it will be a test now. <clears throat> Yet the same rules apply for someone trying to destroy a system as well, which is exactly what we're attempting to do, destroy this system called the matrix of hip-hop. <clears throat> so let's get to work. 
All right? I want to make a, a few other points real quick before I do that. I have some dedications that I wanted to get out and break down, so I'll do just that. I, I want to mention uh, my man Tony Tone, uh, you know, Special K's young brother. I told you I grew up with Special K, T. Rock, Cold Crush Brothers. Uh, Keith Key from the Funky Four Plus One More, Busy B, Chief Rocker, all these on a personal level. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to talk to uh, my man, the Culture Four, that was one of my first groups. Sean B, Al B, Stevie O, Davey D, Todd Rock, and Rock and Raj. Fresh Force, one, uh, Ramik 120, Mr. Zinc, Fresh Rob, Lewski, Mad Mike, Money Ray, who I said was a member of the Cold Crush on my album, want to mention him. You know what I'm saying? Big him up. Big fella. Van Dam, my partner Chill. Dave Evala, Cut King Jazz. Kenny Scott, who uh, I used to go rock with Kenny Scott. He used to tour. Uh, he used, everybody used to tour with Kenny Scott from the BX. Crash Crew would tour with Kenny Scott, the Force MC, uh, MCs. This is when they were the Force MCs. Uh, the original Gompers Stompers, I went to Gompers High School. Tim Dog, DJ Dice, Derek, Keyboard Money Mike, who played the <clears throat> the key, uh, the bass line on uh, The Bridge is Over, dum dum dun 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 That was my man. Said G and Tre Trev from Ultramagnetic. Those are my peeps. So I wanted to uh, big them up and talk about them for a minute. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want, because I don't want to want the niggas to say I did a whole lecture and didn't mention their name and shit like that. That wouldn't be nice. All right. Let's get down. Let me clear this board real quick because I'm going to be using it. <clears throat> Y'all good? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so uh, we in Metro, uh, Mercury retrograde. Let me mention that too. We got the master astrologer in the building. Call him Master Will, as a matter of fact. And um, he was breaking down to me. Mercury retrograde means basically whatever can go wrong will go wrong in certain things of communication. And my sign is Virgo. I'm Virgo. So that's my planet. So if I start rumbling with the papers and shit, you understand. Just bear with me. When I'm in some Mercury retrograde. We're going to get through the shit. As a matter of fact, isn't Nas? Nas, and, uh, Nas is, is Virgo, right? right? He put his album out in the middle of Mercury retrograde. Wow. So did Ludacris. They put they they both Virgos and they put their s interesting. They put their albums out in the middle of Mercury retrograde, which communications. I don't know. How are you doing on the charts? Anybody check the charts? Well, I know your boy is number one. Which is uh, J Jay Z, number one on the Billboard charts this this week. With Lincoln Park, Lincoln Park. So I don't know where Jay is taking hip hop right now. Because now he's doing the mashup thing. You know what I'm saying? This is not hip hop. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. You know what I'm saying? This is not raw hip hop in its rawest form. When I look at Linkin Park, I just want to make this point real quick. Linkin Park. That's not what I see with my third eye. I see lacking spark. <laughs> now, spark, you know, is melanin. That's the black dot. That's the spark. So Jay-Z has a spark. But when something with a spark interacts with something that's lacking a spark, they are on a collision course. And that's the name of the album that Jay-Z has out now, Collision Course. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to share that with y'all real quick. Yeah, collision course with Lacken Spark or Lincoln <laughs> Park. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nothing hip hop about that. So it must be about money or something. And then things working in cycles and shit. You know, when, when hip hop first, uh, you know, Run DMC, I want to talk about them briefly. I'm getting ahead of myself, but this lecture is dedicated to ODB because he was chaos. So I'm going to be all over the place. I'm going to start some shit, stop some shit. As a matter of fact, you could do a hip hop ritual with ODB. I'm going to make a talisman of his ass and put him on my altar because he scares the hell out of white people. 
You know what I'm saying? So when I'm dealing with this hip hop shit, I'm gonna be tapping into ODB's energy. You know what I'm saying? Because he scares his energy alone. And I stood next to him years ago, and I consider myself a pretty spiritual dude, and I could feel the energy from him alone off his body. I was like, God damn! Strong, strong energy. But you look at his eyes, he's scaring the fuck out of white people. They scared of that melanin. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that whole, you know, shit with him is. And you know, uh, what, uh, they came out with the 36 Chambers. He was 36 right before he died, and he died in 36 studios. So that's mathematics. First album was Return of the 36. First album was Return of the 36? God damn. 36th Street. 36th Street. Yeah, that's why I'm Oh, shit. 36th Street. One or two, 36 or 34. But even, even so, that's mathematics. Three and six is nine. That's completion. That's mathematics. You know what I'm saying? However you want to look at it. And then, you know, the night before he passed, they had the concert at the Lincoln, uh, what was it, uh, Continental Airline Arena. The whole crowd is screaming, ODB, ODB. And he wasn't there, but that's kind of just, that's kind of, that was kind of like eerie, you know what I'm saying? It's like a ritual being done and shit. They chanting and calling on his name, and he's not there. Yeah, yeah, he said he was Osiris. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get into that, too. That's when they really started fucking with him, when he started calling himself Osiris. Now, those names, you don't use that in hip-hop, because you might fuck around and wake some niggas up. Niggas might want to start studying who the fuck Osiris is and shit. So you don't use, you can say Jesus all you want. I can fuck a whole bunch of bitches and kill a whole bunch of niggas and thank Jesus for it. That's cool because there ain't no power in that. You know what I'm saying? You don't even see no niggas going up there saying, yo, uh, I like to thank Satan. <laughs> you know, I, I'm a corrupt motherfucker. I'm selling, I'm selling kilos of coke in the street. I got mad bitches in the hood. I'm gonna thank Satan for all that, you know what I'm saying? Or the way they use Satan, should I say, you know what I'm saying? So when he started calling himself Osiris, they was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Something gotta, something, something gotta get here. You know what I'm saying? You calling yourself Osiris and shit? No, plus, I also heard that he's connected, or his great, great, great grandfathers is the ones who sold Manhattan to white people. I'm gonna read about, you know, some shit that's going on with that. That's deep too, because that means you know, them, them treaties that they signing is probably bullshit to begin with. He probably owned fucking Manhattan. They probably said, oh shit, ODB on Manhattan. We got to kill this nigga. <laughs> we ain't trying to return this shit back to his ass. Motherfucker might find the paperwork. Just keeping it real. Just keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? So you never really know what's going on on that realm of things and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So they got to monitor. And in terms of him being, uh, you know, overdose or some bag found in his, I mean, the way they operate, if I wanted to take you out and I knew you like drugs, it ain't, it ain't hard for me to get to you and patch it up and make it look like it's some drug shit. If you like pussy, like Sam Cook, Sam Cook. You know what I'm saying? I was just watching a documentary, excellent documentary on Sam Cook's life. Sam Cook like pussy. Sam Cook stayed with some bitches. He came from out of the church. He wouldn't go to church. He's like, and he got caught on some chick in some hotel. It's easy to make it seem that way. You know what I'm saying? Biggie, they knocked off Biggie and Tupac on some East Coast, West Coast shit. Because it's easy to make it seem that way. They was, as a matter of fact, wasn't they? They was telling Biggie, this is the hip hop cops, before we even knew about the hip hop cops. They was tailing Biggie until five minutes before he got killed. Five minutes before he got killed. Now keep in mind, he's from New York, so they tailed him all the way to LA. Five minutes before he got killed, they went on a donut break. You know what I'm saying? That shit don't add up. And look how he got hit. Came up on the right side the same way they knocked off Pac. They knocked off Pac on the fucking strip. Not even mobsters do that shit. They got an unwritten rule, nigga. Yo, we, we need to talk to you. Nigga, give you that kiss. See you later. Take your ass out in the desert, put two in your fucking head. They don't fuck up money on the strip. Don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? But on some conspiracy tip, it makes a whole bunch of sense. This way you can wash your hands of it. The unseen hand. Do I have that book with me here today? 
No, I got rule by secrecy, which is the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Rule by secrecy. They are not trying to be seen. And for you to think that this is just some beats and rhymes, wake up. They know who we are. They know how we manifest our godhood. You know what I'm saying? So on the ODB tip, I'm going to be a little chaotic. But, uh, I, you know, I heard some other things about ODB that I won't even get into because, I, you know what I'm saying, I'm just not comfortable with it. So I'll keep that to myself. All right, get a little sip of agua. All right, hip hoppers, let's go. Everything that we talked about before this point was just basic shit. You know, let's line some things up. Let's talk hip hop. All right. The year was 2005. And on every corner of every hood and back road throughout the United States, there are potential agents everywhere. These potential agents pose a great threat to anyone who is in possession or still has access to real hip hop. It has become such a rare commodity, so one must move anonymously amongst these programmed hip hoppers for fear that if their true identity and beliefs are revealed, they will most certainly be attacked by agents in training driven by the matrix to believe that the latest version of shit hop downloaded into our thought stream is our salvation. Listen to these young cats. They don't know nothing about hip hop. They want some shit hop. You know what I mean? These wannabe agents will do anything to become agents, and their like-mindedness makes it easy for agents to reach anyone that they deem a threat to the system that has been constructed by the matrix to keep the illusion going. The matrix of hip-hop is just that, an illusion. But our collective mind is being used by the matrix as a vessel to travel faster than the speed of light, bouncing off of similar programmed minds that enable it to appear everywhere and nowhere at once. The mental influence of these potential agents can be so strong that it can override one's natural instinct and ability to be free and think for themselves. You too can be short-circuited and reprogrammed if you're not extremely careful of who and what media channels you interface with regarding real hip-hop in the year 2005. Remember, the agents are everywhere. So if you love real hip-hop and your cover is blown, then you are in grave danger. You know what I'm saying? I'm hanging out with niggas in the street all day, young hip-hop cats that don't know nothing about hip-hop, and they think that they're they keeping it real, son, no, son, I'm trying to get paid, son. And they don't understand they're participating in their own demise with this bullshit that we call hip-hop. You know, you can't even talk to certain people about it. They get real, especially if they got the demo in their pocket. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm going to break down the science of that demo in your pocket and what that shit really means. You know what I'm saying? Where am I at? All right. The Matrix will stop at nothing to make sure that every black male from the age of 8 to 40 years old dresses alike, thinks alike, listens to the same music, and adheres to the same way of life. The Matrix will stop at nothing to ensure that every black female feels degraded, worthless, and the, and the black male is her primary en enemy. However, you are different. The mere fact that you have rejected the programming that has turned 99% of our youth into hip hop drones means that you are an anomaly with the capacity to retain the strand of original hip hop within your DNA. It means that you still have access to your detailed files about a time in hip hop when the guards ruled. It means that you are immune to every radio station, hip hop magazine, and video show that attempts to erase your memory or scramble your DNA structure in an effort to close the gateway between hip hop's past and hip hop future. It means that by the matrix standards, you are the one. And with an activated pineal gland that can clearly see beyond the illusion that is the matrix, the construct, you are more dangerous than a million of its agents. It also means that at this very moment, agents are coming to get you, and time is running out. Since time is an illusion, it's easy for the matrix to use it to alter the perception and thought patterns of the youth who are 18 years old and younger because they have literally been birthed into the construct. If you're 18 years old and younger and shit, because this timeline I'm going to break down for you, from 88 on, if you, you know what I'm saying, you have been birthed into this, so you will fight for this like it's real. All right, where am I? Okay. The Matrix of Hip Hop is all that they know and all that they wish to know, and they will fight to the, feverishly to defend it. The divide between the Matrix 
and old school hip hop or Zion must be kept because old school heads know the truth that you youngsters are nothing more than slaves and your sole purpose of existence is to keep this version of the matrix alive. The further we move from its origins, the easier it becomes to suppress and conceal the true knowledge of hip hop. In a generation or two, the matrix will be able to dismiss the gods who created real hip hop as some sort of myth or urban legend because there will be no remnants of their existence if we don't find a way to preserve the history, not by words alone, but through practice. You know what I'm saying? If we don't, us older cats who understand what hip-hop is about, if we don't begin to teach these young cats what hip-hop is about, they're going to dismiss uh, Kumo D as some kind of fucking myth. Telling each other, oh, Kumo D never existed. You mean the guy with the dark glasses is a myth. It never happened. <laughs> Serious. They'll be able to do that shit after a while. And the further and further we move from its origins and us old school heads don't pass it on. You know what I'm saying? You seen the movie Incredibles? Anybody seen that? All right, now, twice. twice, beautiful. In that movie, because I like to parallel a lot of shit with hip-hop. In that movie, I felt that they was talking about hip-hop in a weird sense. Meaning, the Incredibles, the ones who created hip-hop, they were no longer needed now. You know what I'm saying? So once they got the matrix and the construct set up, they didn't need Rakim and Jazzo. And they didn't need motherfuckers like that no more. And the incredible MCs had to go and, and get a job and be normal and shit like that. Sitting at a desk, I, I drive a bus for a living. I'm one of the fucking Incredibles. You know what I'm saying? Here I'm on a fucking bus with old ladies and shit and suppressing my creative energy and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's the same process. And all these incredible MCs have all those posters on the wall about the glory days or when they used to be the Incredibles. You know what I'm saying? So I'm calling on all the incredible MCs. Whether you had a deal or you didn't have a deal, I'm calling on all y'all now in 2005 to step it up. Take that sword off the wall, sharpen the shit up. You know what I'm saying? It's just the war of words. We coming to it. You know what I'm saying? My sword ain't as sharp as it used to be. I ain't wrote nothing in years. But uh, I can still jig a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like Morpheus in the fight scenes. I'm doing all the old school shit while Neo and these young cats are spitting all this off the... But I'll get you. I'll cut you. I'll cut you. All right? I'm calling on all those incredible producers to take the drum machine out the closet. Dust the shit off. You know what I'm saying? Start cracking up your beats again and shit like that. Not to get a deal, because we, we know that's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But just to teach these young cats. And here's the thing. Don't let none of them niggas who are talking that bullshit rhyme on your track. That's where the producers kind of, we kind of throw them by the wayside because they don't take responsibility for nothing. I just, like, like, like uh, G-Rap said, I, you know, I'm just a chef. I just cook up the stew and step. You know what I'm saying? So we, we kind of let the producers off the hook. Nah, don't let no niggas rhyme on your track. My partner Dave did that. He pulled his drum machine down and he told all them little young niggas, he said, listen, I got beats. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But you, when you come to my house, you can't rhyme about none of that street killing shit if you didn't really do it. Nobody knocked on his door. Nobody. You know what I'm saying? So we all have to begin to take responsibility for what we're doing. So I'm calling on all those Incredibles. And you young cats, when you in a cypher and you spitting and shit like that, and you see that old dude with just a little bit of gray in his beard, in his beard, and he got a newspaper on his hand because he coming from work or he got his kids, and he's sitting in the cypher and he watching, it's probably one of the masters right there. You know what I'm saying? That's why he's sitting there. He's disgusted, disgusted at where hip hop has, 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 torn, has turned, you know what I'm saying? But when the, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So if you young cats just say, yo, 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 old man, you used to do this? He probably say, yeah, shorty, come in. Let me show you what this is about. Let me tell you about the Cold Crush. Let me tell you about the Furious Five, Funky Four. Let me tell you. Let me show you how to do this, how to never turn your back to the crown when you're performing. You know what I'm saying? It's shit like that, them little techniques. You follow me? So that's why I'm calling on all the Incredibles. I'm dedicating this lecture to the Incredibles. Those MCs, you know what I'm saying, who were pushed off to the wayside because they had already got a system in place. They didn't, you know what I'm saying? Once they got their system, which we gonna break down, once they got their system in place, fuck they need you for? Go get a job. Ain't that some shit. All right, let's continue on. If you look out into the streets in 2005, you'll see that The Matrix has successfully manufactured an army of wannabe MCs, producers, 
video hoes, mixed DJs, ball players, street hustlers, and pimps who could care less about the origins of hip hop. They just want to get paid. They are all potential agents. Make no mistake about it, fellas. If it doesn't matter if they're your brother, sister, homeboy, husband, or wife. If they are not unplugged and armed with a fully activated pineal gland, then they are your enemy. Instead of knowledge, most of these potential agents are armed with demos in their pockets that could very well contain the access codes needed for them to escape the hood and become full agents. That's the goal of many of our young MCs, but access must be granted in the form of music that fits the criteria of the matrix, which is violent and destructive. So all these cats got demos in their pockets, and this shit is just, they hoping that these are the codes that can get them out of the hood. So they can come back and shit with they watch and shit and roll through the hood and look at you and shit like, what's up, nigga? You know what I'm saying? And shit like that. These rappers piss me off. When they on TV telling me I ain't shit, I gotta work, you a bum nigga, Wayne. Black Thought, you ain't shit. And I'm the one who voted this motherfucker here. I'm the one who purchased this record, which is an election. You know what I'm saying? When you go out and purchase their record, you buy into that shit. Nigga telling me I ain't shit. You ain't shit, Wayne. You ain't shit. Nigga, get a job. I'm like, oh shit. This is fucked up. So you got to watch who you promote and shit like that. That's very fucking key. You know what I'm saying? If their demo is also encrypted with information that indicates that they hate women, hate themselves, and are willing to allow their soul and creative energy to be captured onto a disc to gain clearance, they could very well be uploaded into the system. The Matrix doesn't have to scan your retinal fingerprints to determine if you are hip hop ready to become an agent. It simply has to place your CD into the hard drive of its mainframe located at one of its record companies, movie studios, and video shoots. Once the CD is placed into the hard drive of the Matrix and the information is screened, processed, and authorized, they, uh, they become full agents and their mission, if they so choose to accept it, is to kill you. Ain't that some shit? All they gotta do is take their CD and place it into the hard drive of the Matrix. Go to a record company, movie studio, and if that shit matches up, they screen it, process it, yeah, you, you hate your women, you violent and shit, you know what I'm saying, you ready to sell out, access granted. And they move from one side of the hood into some matrix shit. And these same motherfuckers come back to kill you. Let me show you how right now. All right? So, if, you know, that's what happens if their demo is um, accepted. If their demo is rejected, it simply means that they have not received enough programming on how the matrix operates, and they must return to one of its many mind control outlets, like the television, radio, movie theater, or magazine stand for more training and to await further instructions. The matrix of hip hop, the mission of a hip hop agent is to kill you with products like alcohol, which, one is, which is one of the leading causes of death of black people and Latino people in the hood. The mission is to kill you with cigarettes that cause cancer, meat and dairy products that destroy the body. The mission is to kill you with hip hop ringtones that distract you from the universal tones. And the mission is to drain all of your resources that you, so that you become totally dependent on your oppressor. The mission is to spiritually kill you with religion. Now you must sit back and ask yourself, is my favorite rapper trying to kill me? This is the shit I ask myself when they be selling me all these fucking products and shit, and all of these detrimental products at that. You know what I'm saying? This shit is, these niggas are trying to kill me. But they come in the hood as guys as they trying to save you and all this old kind of shit. These rappers is government agents. Government can, ain't gotta do nothing. Send the rapper in the hood and you believe in the rapper. I told you at the beginning of the lecture, they don't have to control millions, they need to control one that has control over millions. And once they slide his ass across the board, you move in with him. Niggas say buy this, niggas say get that. Shit must be what I need to get. Very critical. Very fucking critical. But don't blame them. Your compliance with the program makes you an agent of your own demise, as I just mentioned. Your compliance with that shit, buying what this nigga said buy, you an agent of your own fucking demise. This is the hip hop art of war, and these agents will stop at nothing to strategically corner and destroy their enemy in all walks of life. We are the enemy. 
the ones who can see but who are grossly outnumbered by those who feel that hip hop belongs to the people who created it and they're just protecting our way of life when in fact they're protecting the very system that is destroying real hip hop. We may lose the battle, but we can still win the war. Just as there are agents working for the matrix, there must be double agents positioned inside of the construct ready to assist us in our fight for freedom. Gotta be. That's just the law of opposites, polarities and shit. It's all these agents out there to kill us. Gotta be some cats in, in hip hop who understand what's going on that's just waiting for the opportune time to turn this shit back over to the people. One can only hope so because in the year 2005, the war of words will escalate to new heights as the battle lines between, that have been drawn between these end times of rhyme. But that's the end of the story. Let's go back to the beginning. So y'all follow me with that? These agents are around, so we're gonna go back to the beginning of the story. Earth, air, water, fire, and hip hop. You know what I'm saying? You young cats is hip hop occultists. Y'all dealing with some hip hop alchemy, and y'all don't even fucking realize it. You know what I'm saying? It's just that simple. Each of the elements, like earth, I attribute that to the graph writer. You know what I'm saying? Because he uses earth, you know what I'm saying, fixed things to put those glyphs up on the wall and shit. The air, that's the DJ. It's a cat because air needs sound, you know what I'm saying, sound travels through the air, you know what I'm saying, so when the DJ is doing this, putting his call out, that shit goes through the air, water, oh, that's the b-boy play, I used to do that shit, son, I wasn't nice though, but I used to do it, fire, the word, you know what I'm saying, that fire, when you mix them all together, they become the culmination of hip-hop, when you add that secret elixir, that element, that cats who don't have that element, can't really participate in hip-hop, on that level, all right? <clears throat> so let's break down Earth first. When this civilization finally crumbles and is covered by the sands of time, what will be left behind as a monument for the next civilization to study about our glorious past? From a hip hop point of view, the answer to this question would undoubtedly be tenement buildings. And just like the Great Pyramids of Kemet, these tenement buildings would be considered as sacred as any other monuments left behind by our ancestors to awaken a future people. However, it wouldn't be the architectural structure of these buildings that would be so amazing, but the graffiti writing on its walls that would tell an astonishing story and stories just as the pyramids chronicled our journey from man to God, then from God to man. Graffiti, which is the first element of hip hop, and it's also the earth element would be the only one of the four elements that could stand the test of time. A thousand years from now, when they excavate our remains, they would have to look on the walls of tenement buildings to study the urban glyphs to get a mere clue of who we really were. It would then take another 100 years for them to decipher the stories being told. Stories of the god MCs who ruled the lands and the riches they obtained. Stories about the beat makers, the dancers, and the graph artists themselves who were the first to awaken and realize that we were once gods. The story would go on to tell about how graffiti activated the other elements and began the alchemical process of raising the people who were left for dead back to the god realm from which they came. Unfortunately, the story would end with the arrival of a foreign people from another realm who began a crusade to destroy graffiti by removing it from its walls, handball courts, and subway trains. The latter being the most critical because in the beginning of hip hop <clears throat> was the word, the written word. And the subway train enabled graph artists to spread the word throughout the boroughs, activating the pineal glands of those who could decipher the strange markings. As the train rolled by, initiates from this, uh, uh, Initial ancient mystery school of writing who chose to reincarnate at that time began popping up simultaneously. Those who are not from the God realm know and understand that they are on borrowed time. All right? They are trained to recognize spiritual signs that serve as forewarnings of their demise. Consequently, when they saw the strange markers on the tenement buildings and the, inter the interpretation was clear, the writing is on the wall and the devil's time to rule was over. 
So they had to shut down this vortex of energy before it was too late, before too many of the sleepwalkers emerged from the dead. This is the real reason today that there is scarce evidence of its existence, except amongst those who have made the lifelong commitment to preserve the science of graffiti. And even today, only those with a trained first eye can truly decipher the language being spoken. I, I don't know what the fuck that shit is. I mean, I appreciate it, but there are certain guys who Gliss was so ill that you just be like, damn, son. And he can break that shit down to you with that shit, man, this, that. You have to have a trained first eye. You have to be from that initiate school from ancient times and reincarnated. Some cats can run up and say, oh, that shit mean this, Wayne. Oh, all right, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> what the fuck these niggas is talking about? You know what I'm saying? All right. The glyphs, symbols, and images are nothing more than frozen sounds that have formed sacred words spoken by the supreme consciousness. Interfacing through your interpretation of these tags is like having a conversation with God, the higher realms of self connected to the infinite one. It's the earth element because it uses matter to manifest itself, unlike our ancestors, ancestors who had as much time as they needed to carve their hieroglyphs into stone, spray paint was used because it was quick to dry, allowing the graph artists to, you know, stick and move. You know what I'm saying? And then there was some social shit in there, fuck Koch, Koch sucks back in the 70s. You know, niggas do little social messages and that shit too. But that's some deep shit. You know what I'm saying? So we want to put that with the graph artist. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to put that shit with hieroglyphs. It's some hip-hop hieroglyph shit. And for all the ancients who might get mad because I attributed graffiti to hieroglyphs, sorry. You know what I'm saying? I have to show hip-hop cats how we are connected to ancient times. It's nothing new under the sun. All this shit, we just coming back and we calling it hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? We've been beating on drums, writing on walls, dancing, and the oracle been speaking for years. They didn't call it hip-hop. We just calling this shit hip hop. All right? Y'all still with me? All right, let's deal with the air element of hip hop. The air element is reserved for sound that has movement. In this case, I'm talking about sound waves generated by the DJ on the ones and twos. This still enables us to interface with God just through a different medium of sound. All right? Music is universal, not the language spoken or harmonized over the music. So DJs master the art of cleverly highlighting the breakbeat, which contained encoded messages within the music itself, and created an entirely different language that spoke to the higher realms of one's soul. You follow me? That's what the breakbeat was about. We could, you know, the words could have been saying anything in the English language as we discussed. But when niggas started, I used to DJ too. I used to pop needles. I used to needle drop. Panic mentioned that on this old school joint. I used to spin the needles back on some Grand Wizard Theodore shit. I wasn't nice, but again, like I said, when you did hip hop back in the day, you did a couple of them things. You was a b-boy, you had a graph, you know what I'm saying? You might have been a DJ for a while. You know what I'm saying? You was skilled in all of the, the crafts. Unlike all right? Today. Huh? Unlike today. unlike today. Very unlike today. All right? So, not to say that DJs didn't play the words or choruses in the song because they did. It's just that the most important part of the song was the breakbeat. The breakbeat in the song allows you to cross over to the dark side or the chaos realm of hip hop because at that point in the song, no human was speaking to you in a degenerative language like English that only served as a tool to retard your ability to reconnect with your higher self. You automatically were in tune with the universe via the melanin in your body, linking up with the harmonious sounds emanating from the speakers. The mind was able to ride the sound waves into a different dimension or of time and space for a short period of time before returning to the earthly realm, only to do it again when the next breakbeat came on. When the words in a song were used or highlighted, they were usually mixed scratched or transformed into foreign languages that were incomprehensive to those who could not access the high frequencies of sound. What I mean by that is this, as, as panic broke down, we understood that shit. That was hip hop. If we used the words, we transformed them shits, scratched them shits up a certain way. 
That's what the DJ was doing. He was transforming and all of that shit. Speaking a whole other language that spoke to my soul, son. I was at the ropes like this. Shorty back up from the ropes. I'm like, yo, son, you know what I'm saying? See what the fuck's going on and shit. You know? All right. What sounded like gibberish to most was in fact mathematical instructions encased in sound designed to reformulate our DNA structure. In other words, music calms the savage beast but awakens the beast within us by igniting our kundalini energy. In ancient times, it was the drummer who possessed the power to induce trance-like states amongst the faithful at what was called sacred spiritual ceremonies. All right? In hip hop, the drummer became the DJ. And a spiritual ceremony in hip hop terms was known as a jam, which was a congregation of b-boys and b-girls at a specific location in the hood that was designated by the event's soul controller, the DJ. He and only he had the power through the use of his turntable wizardry to beam signals that blasted out of his speakers to the hood in the form of scratches and drum beats that echoed off the, the concrete of project walls and tenement halls. Even, even the tenement buildings themselves changed the way that the sound of the drums resonated through the jams. All right, so that was all science right there. Turning them into sound chambers equal to those found in the pyramids devi devised to align our energy uh, you know, with the pyramids, or in this case, tenement buildings on other planets. So we, them tenement buildings started serving as fucking pyramids. And the way that sound echoed off the tenement buildings when you was at that jam and shit, Shit became a sound chamber which aligned you with hip hop on Mars. Fuck it. Africa bad body talking about hip hop. He want to see hip hop on Mars. Who knows? Who knows where this shit started from? It may be the way we communicating with those other planets. You know what I'm saying? Keep that real. All right. This was all made possible by the DJ who had total command over two sphere like melanin discs that spun to create vortexes in the universe that allowed us to escape the hardships of this so-called reality that we have been subjected to. So the DJ, that's two melanin discs, that's all it is, pop, pop, spinning them shits back and forth, creating little vortexes and shit, niggas is tapping in. Wheels of steel, all right? I, I wanna make that clear. These black holes were opened not just by the spiraling of the spears, but also by the scratching, mixing, transformation, and altering of records' original content that allowed those with melanin to cross over into alternate dimensions at will. Hip hoppers, break dancers, and MCs within this spiritual circumference who wanted to return home just had to follow the trail of the wormhole back to its original source, the DJ. All right, so let's put that up on the board. Fuck with the air cat, the DJ. Slash the drummer. For you ancient cats, you know what I'm saying, who don't really, my handwriting sucks, like I said. That's why I didn't write rhymes. You know what I'm saying, I, I didn't write in school. And I see my 10 year old, my 11 year old son doing it now. He be like trying to complete a sentence. I be like, didn't you read this? His mind is moving faster than his hand can write, so it's just words missed and so I understand what's going on with that. All right, let's get down to the water element. The human body is composed of over 70% of water, so it should come to you as no surprise that this represents the water element of hip hop. B-boys, B-girls, poppers, lockers, break dancers, and those who did the electric boogie were all of the water aspect. I man chill was a water element. The composition of the, of the composition of water changes based on the type of air it comes in contact with. In other words, the type of beats, air, that you heard determine whether you chilled on the wall in the frozen state, did the electric boogie in the fluid state, became steam by beats that got you riled up and ready to fight, or distilled back in the planet in the form of the latest breakdance moves. You know what I'm saying? So water, you know, that, that's just the, how water breaks down. So that determined, the music you listen to determined how you chilled. The body has the ability to transmute at will especially when it fuses with all of the elements at its disposal. The earth element is also important as it pertains to water because it provides a foundation for water to flow on. True masses of the water element were able to walk on air via the moonwalk. Body movement represented still a different degree of sound, the silent yet sacred geometrical portion of it. 
Dancing is nothing more than sacred geometry, and each move that the body makes is an expression of sound without actually making any. Or should I say that the, the body in motion makes sounds that vibrate so high that only the heavens can hear. This is how we were able to perform rain dances and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Because the body is making sound. It's music. Son, I'm hip-hop, son. When I tell you that I'm hip-hop, and every, when I walk down the street like this, son, it's hip-hop shit, son. This, this, is, this is my walk. You know what I'm saying? When I'm at the jam, I'm speaking to other brothers who communicate like that. That shit is poetry in motion. And all we did was make an art form to articulate that. A music form, you know what I'm saying? This is who we are. All right? All right. B-boys bopping down the street will also create an energy. However, the science of how to use that energy at one to one's benefit had been lost within the time of the ancients and the reincarnation of hip-hop. So we didn't realize that, you know what I'm saying, this was some sacred geometry at the time we was doing it. We was just doing it. The whole hip-hop shit. The purpose I'm doing this lecture, in essence, is because this is, like I said, this is not about the history of hip-hop. I don't want to get no old school cats fucked up and said, nigga, you was 10. They're right. I was 10, but I'm giving you hip-hop through the eyes of a 10-year-old. And in retrospect, when we go back to visit what hip-hop is, I discovered it was some spiritual shit. And I want to share it with the world. You know what I'm saying? Man, a lot of times these things take place in retrospect. You don't realize who you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it, because you're doing it. Malcolm X didn't know he was fucking Malcolm X. He was just saying, look, this is some shit that's going on, and I got to express this to the people. Past, you know? present, and future interact simultaneously. Thank you. Past, present, and future interact simultaneously. 2%, 2%. They got to give me royalties on that shit. Now. You be in the studio doing your shit, and a nigga will say, don't say it like this, say it like that. And then nigga want credit for your song and shit. Folks did that shit to me back in the day. Niggas, you know, don't say the chorus like this. Say it like that. Nigga want a credit. Ain't that some shit? That's how that shit works. All right, raising one's kundalini energy without the proper focus and intent can be very dangerous. So break dancing without the rituals that accompanied them did us more harm than good because it allowed those devils who understood the power that we possess to feed off of that ethereal energy to suppress us and raise themselves up. Even though we didn't have the full understanding of body movements at the time, we were still able to receive some of its spiritual properties by a b-boy by using it to heal the body. When we were breakdancing, doing the electric buzzy, or just chilling in the b-boy stance, meditating on hip-hop as a whole, we were in fact in an altered state of mind that allowed us to escape the horrid conditions of life in the inner cities. When the music stopped and we stopped dancing, we were forced to return to the stark reality of poverty, crime, and racism, which were the ingredients that created hip-hop in the first place. You know what I'm saying? It created hip-hop in the first Those conditions forced us to come up with a soundtrack about the shit we was going through. You know what I'm saying? And we brought that soundtrack across as hip-hop. You know what I mean? Hard times. So we want to focus a little bit later on on who creating those conditions to make us come up with this kind of shit, making us tap in. And they continue to do it. You know what I'm saying? Every time shit get fucked up, they put some pressure on us because we're the only ones who can create anything that you see. So we want to write that. For the water is the B-boy. Y'all still with me? All right. <clears throat> so let's get to fire. I think jazz are like this one. The MC was the last of the four basic elements to emerge. The reason I say, I mean, a lot of people are just determined was it water, was it fire? I'm gonna say fire. Because niggas was b boying from the beginning. And we all know graph has been around since fucking the late 60s. Shit, motherfuckers been writing on the walls. And the DJ, we're gonna attribute that to Herc. You know what I'm saying? The one who came out to start, we're gonna attribute it to Herc. I mean, like I said, I'm not doing something on history. You know what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll give Herc that kind of credit. I know a story that Herc don't want me to tell. All right, the MC was the last of the four basic elements to emerge. Within him were all the other elements combined which ignited the spark necessary for him or her to spit fire. The word represented the spoken word activated when the fiery energy at the base of the spine was raised to the level of the...